It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. What a great panel we have for you. Ashley Esketh is here from CNET, uh, joining us from KTLA, my good friend Rich Demuro, and a longtime visitor from the past from CBS This Morning, David Pogue is here. We'll start off by talking about a breaking story. Apparently, state-sponsored hackers, they think it's Russia, have broken into the U.S. Treasury and Commerce Department. We'll have the deets. We'll break down the attack, the indictment of Facebook, over monopolistic practices, why the AirPod Max is so damn heavy, and the real story behind HBO Max, Warner Media, Disney Plus. It's all coming up next on Twit. This Week in Tech comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is, is twit. twit. This is Twit, This Week in Tech. Episode 801. Recorded Sunday, December 13th, 2020. I can't believe it's not Minecraft. This episode of This Week in Tech is brought to you by Stamps.com. This holiday season, more people will be mailing stuff than ever before. That means the post office is going to be busy. Save time with Stamps.com. For a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment, go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter the code TWIT. And by Zendesk. Zendesk makes software for better customer service. They help empower support agents and give them the right tools. You could say they're champions of customer service. Visit Zendesk.com slash twit to learn more. And by Mint Mobile. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free by going to MintMobile.com slash twit. And by LastPass. Don't wait until the end of the year to get strong security. Start solidifying your cybersecurity strategy with the award-winning LastPass today. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we get together with some of the best minds of the business to talk about the week's tech news. Oh, we have a fun panel this week. Kind of really, I'm very excited. Ashley Sketh is here. It's always wonderful Hi, to see her. Oh, she God. has a Jack Skeleton, Skellington portrait over her left shoulder, but it, uh, and as, as has happened in the past, it was appropriate during Halloween, but now you need to kind of tilt it a little bit so that we could see his, his uh, Father Christmas angle. Yeah, see, I don't know how we're going to, just imagine that if you will, just, folks. I'll just hold it like this. For Would the you next just stay that way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't move. Senior producer. At CNET, it's really nice to see you, uh, Ashley. And I, you, sh you shocked me because Wolfie, your your child, is 18 months old. He's a year and a half old now. You said he, he's fiddling with the dials. And I thought, well, how is he getting up onto the table? But he's 18. He can walk. He can yeah. talk. Oh, he, can, he runs. He, he runs. runs fast. <gasps> how fast those. He things talks. He says stuff. He runs. He's, Yeah. She also has a hostile goose over her right shoulder, so Two. be nice. <laughs> is that the Untitled Goose Game? <laughs> Watching. You, you I made this, but it, it is, that is what it is. I found this uh, unpainted goose at a Home Goods, and I was like, what is this Untitled Goose doing in a Home Goods? <laughs> so you got to And I bought it. some paint, and nice. I painted him uh, to look exact. and I bought him a little, a little neck ribbon, like very you can pretty. do in the game. It's very and festive. And I bought him a tiny crown, Aww. like you can get in the game. Oh, it's Untitled Goose Game it brought to life. Yeah. It's nice to see you, Ashley. Also nice to see Rich DeMuro, KTLA's Rich on Tech. Haven't seen you in, in an age. Normally, you'd be uh, you'd be taking over for me on the radio show, but no one's going nowhere. So nope. I'm glad we could get you on the Twitch show instead. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun. I miss my trips up to uh, I Petaluma know. I know. You know, once or twice you. a year. I miss having you here. That's all right. The login's still on my computer anytime you need to use okay. it. <laughs> I like that touch. I never actually used it, Oh, by the way, well, when it was there. I never, we, never you know, logged in. I have a picture nice of you on it. And this is for Rich. Um, it's like leaving Santa cookies, you know. You got to take one bite just to let me know you did it. That's all. 
And somebody who hasn't been on our show in years, it's weird because a week ago on the radio show, I mentioned David Pogue and the missing manual. Somebody was looking for some uh, information. I said, oh, Dave's got great books. And then minutes, like an hour later, I get a DM. David Pogue is here. It's so great to have you, David. Thank you very much. I, I try to appear on your show once every 400 episodes. So <laughs> I was I was aiming for number 800 uh, last just week. Missed and just missed it. Just missed it. 801 this week. Um, David uh, used to be the, uh, of course, uh, well, David used to be a lot of things. Used to be a <laughs> musical theater composer. Used to be at the New York Times, uh, their tech reporter. Uh, you wrote the missing manuals, but I understand that's not, that's the end of that one. That is true. My missing manuals on iPhone, Mac, and Windows are no more. Uh, O'Reilly is going to keep up some of them, some of the missing manuals from other authors. But um, they said that, you know, people just aren't buying tech books anymore. They all, all these young people today get their information from YouTube and Google. That's right. So that's right. Uh, my wife said, well, why don't you pitch the same exact thing to a public <laughs> who is willing to invest? And so, so I'm happy to announce right here on live twit, my new series, the unlocked series. Oh, I so like this it. is the first one shipping now Mac unlocked. And then the iPhone one comes out in a couple of weeks. You also did, which I really enjoyed the basics, the Pogues basics series. And those were a lot of fun, but I'm really looking forward to your next book. A couple of months ago, I, went through a phase where I thought I should prepare for climate change because it doesn't look like we're going to do anything in time. So I really should figure out, you know, what I'm going to do um, in the next 30 years. Uh, but you actually have written the book that one must read, it sounds like. When does this come out? Oh, man, you you put 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 your thumb finger on the nail. This is my magnum opus. Two years I spent working on this. Wow. It's how to prepare for climate change. It's where to live, how to invest, how to insure, how to talk to your kids, and then, you know, how to survive flood, wildfire, drought, tornadoes, well, and stuff. Uh, how do it you comes out in kids? January. Kids, you and know, you know you have my plugging for the show. <laughs> okay, good. You know how you like the weather and it's really hot? You know, like kids, you know, like, you know how that is? Get ready. It's going to be great. You're going to love why do you talk do you to kids? kids? Like, do you kids like summer? <laughs> you like summer? <laughs> yeah. How about you? You know how round? much you like summer? Guess what? Actually, here <laughs> in Northern California, you're in Connecticut right now, but here in Northern California, David, but here in Northern California, and you too, Rich, in Southern California, we, we had the worst wildfires over the last few years. That's Apparently. really what's mm -hmm. scaring me. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know if horrible. I can stay here. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been really, really bad. Not not the climate haven. Uh, yeah. You got the sea level rise. You got the wildfires. You got the heat. You got the drought. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the big one. The big one. What's the big one? The earthquake? The big one. There's a bigger yeah, one? No, the big one's the big one. The big one. Not technically climate change related, but it is lurking out there. It is. Oddly enough, the thing I worry about the least of all of those things. Is like the it's a, It should be the thing I'm most concerned. I felt I like when I was a kid, that was the thing I was the most scared of, was most concerned about. And then uh, because, you know, it's like we had the, the Landers quake and then we had Northridge and it was like, oh, the big one's coming. And now I'm just like, ah, that was like the least of my worries. I'm more concerned about, you know, not having water in five years. <laughs> Yeah, life is just uncertain. I think worrying about the future is probably doesn't pay off. But uh, there's plenty to worry about in the present. <laughs> we can worry about that. Uh, in fact, this story just breaking uh, as uh, as we began the show from Reuters. Hackers believed to be working for Russia have been monitoring internal email traffic at the U.S. Treasury Department. And another agency that decides internet and telecommunications policy. Uh, this is now in the hands of the National Security Council. They had an emergency meeting uh, at the White House today. There's concern within the U.S. intelligence community that the Russian hackers who targeted Treasury and the Commerce Department's National Telecommunications and Information Administration have used a similar tool to break into other government agencies... Uh, this is according to four, according to Reuters, who say they learned this from four people briefed on the matter, but the people didn't say which other agencies. Uh, as always, it's hard to attribute these, but apparently Russia is currently believed to be behind the attack. You may remember that FireEye, 
which is a big U.S. cybersecurity company, uh, disclosed was hacked fairly recently, and apparently tools that they had, hacking tools that they had, were exfiltrated. It is believed that perhaps these are related. So this is a mess, um, and probably couldn't have happened at a, at a worse time. Well, maybe it could have happened, been worse if it had happened right before the election. The um, hackers broke into the NTIA's Microsoft Office 365. Uh, <laughs> staff yeah. emails were monitored by hackers for months. This is one of those advanced persistent threats. They sat on the network and just watched what was going on. Yikes. The hackers are highly sophisticated, according to Reuters, and have been able to trick the Microsoft platform's authentication controls. Um, another person briefed on the matter said, this is for sure a nation state. The full scope of the breach is as yet unclear. So there's not much to say. And uh, as you're listening to this, you know, as we're talking on a Sunday afternoon, this is just breaking. I suspect over the next few days we'll learn more. Maybe. But Maybe. This, this is where uh, I think warfare is headed, is cyber warfare, for sure. For sure. And it's weird. There, there really hasn't been a lot of breach news in like a year, I mean, remember for a while, every other month, it was Sony, mm. it was Target, it was somebody. And I guess it's like everybody got distracted with the with the pandemic. We had so many other things to worry about. But you know what? The hackers were not slowed down by the pandemic. They took that as an opportunity in many yeah. cases, I think. Well, I think, you know, it's one thing for the the government, but for the average person, it's like, you know, I always just think about, you know, what what I have out there and, you know, what what I could be hacked with. And, you know, it's like that two factor authentication. I talk to people all the time, like you got to set this up. You got to make sure you mm -hmm. use different passwords. And I'm talking to people all the time. And, you know, pe you know, Leo, I'm sure all of you know this, but like when you're a tech person, you're kind of like that doctor at the party where you're like, all right, now tell me your password so I can like figure this out. And it's like, OK, it's uh, Roomba one, two, three, four. I'm like, what? And they're like, oh, uh, yeah. try one, two, three, four, five at the end. I'm like, wait, seriously? I mean, this is it's the like, thing no. is like people are still using these terrible passwords and they don't want to they don't want to make it hard because then they can't log in. So yeah, but it, you know it's what? really a bad thing. But Rich, thing. here's the thing. It doesn't matter. Even if everybody in the country magically started using long, complicated passwords, all distinct and change them every day, that's completely irrelevant to data breaches. A breach is when well, they get yes. the database of passwords. It doesn't matter. It's not our but, fault. It's not well, our and stupid It doesn't even passwords. matter at that point when they get a password because right. they already have all your information. Right. <laughs> so exactly. This one it sounded like they, they were, it. said they got into the Microsoft authentication. Like, you know, it looks like they were just yeah. watching the emails being sent back and forth. I mean, are we not putting two factor on our government uh, 365 I'm sure accounts? sure we are. <laughs> so, although I remember so. four years ago, the DNC hack, Marty Podesta, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, what was his password? It was like password one, two, oh, three or really something. Bad. It was terrible. It was so bad. And no two factor. He was fished. But it was you know, fished. I always, yeah. It reminds me of um, a long time ago, someone used to, someone told me uh, whatever technology you see the military John have, Podesta, yeah. they're 20 years ahead. And I would like to amend that today to say whatever <laughs> cipher technology yeah. you see, all of us using subtract 20 years. That's what the government's using because I feel yeah. like we just cannot upgrade our infrastructure. And, and, and really a big part of it is, you know, you see these, these senators, these, these representatives, these Congress people, they're printing out their tweets. Yeah. They're printing them yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's wild. To Executives still how, do how, that. I'm not yeah, on email. I'll just have my secretary not... print out the email and I'll uh, I'll read it, Ugh. handwrite the answer. And would you send that for me? Uh, well, it's like heart. large corporations. That this new software comes out and they don't want to upgrade their computers because it breaks yeah. one tiny breaks piece everything. of functionality that they use in their organization. And so it's like, you know, I'm editing on one version of a program because I've got my personal computer and someone I'm working with is like, oh, I can't update. I haven't updated in a year because, you know, it breaks our graphics program. It's like, wait, yeah. what? Like, what? Yeah. come this on. Is, this is something I things. try to explain on the radio show. And I don't think I've done a very good job, but the, there is this issue of your personal information, as you pointed out, of your personal information being or your phone being hacked or whatever. That's less likely because these are kind of general uh, attacks uh, across a broad scope of people. They're not going after you per se. It's all a, a, a numbers game. That's 
a little easier to protect against. In fact, I think everybody can doing simple things like two-factor. But then there's an, another level entirely of this nation-state hacking mm -hmm. where, I mean, we're learning about, we learned about uh, just last week, a, a drive-by attack on iPhones. It's been patched. I don't want to scare you. But it was discovered last spring by Google's uh, Project Zero where you wouldn't even have to touch the iPhone. You could be in another room, capture the airdrop packets flying through the air, modify them. You could hack the iPhone, get into it, get in full access to everything on the iPhone. But worse yet, it could then worm itself into every other iPhone it encounters. So a nation state should, you know, sitting at a cafe in uh, Tel Aviv, waiting for the uh, Israeli, uh, you know, uh, attache or the U.S. attache to walk by, have a cup of coffee, hack his phone. He goes back to the U.S. embassy. Every phone in the embassy is then hacked by him in turn via wormable exploit. This was a nightmare attack, a no-touch, no-involvement attack. That's the kind of thing that fortunately was patched and probably isn't going to bite any one of us. But I would not be surprised at all if a nation state or somebody like FireEye had this for a long time and just mm -hmm. they sat on it because they're using it for specific targeted attacks. So I try to explain on the radio, there's a, a mass attack. You know, those are easy to thwart. You don't have to worry so much. But if you're a spy, <laughs> a military attache, if, if, if you're the target of a nation state, it's basically hopeless. You're dead. You might as And so I don't know what we're doing for OPSEC. The fact that the Treasury Department was hacked probably shouldn't be too surprising. We had a panel uh, a little while ago, uh, red team versus blue team, about attack and defense, a last pass panel last month. Uh, and we had people like Bruce Schneier on. Bruce, who is one of the key kings of security, said, it's hopeless. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. <laughs> you assume, you should assume that you're not only under attack, but that you've been hacked. Mm -hmm. and and that they are wandering around. You should assume that. There is nothing you can do. You try to mitigate it, maybe, and there are lots of things you should be doing, and one hopes that the, the Treasury Department and NTIA was doing. But I, this is my fear, and this is what I actually was getting at, David, was I, were, I think just like we have a Geneva Accord, because there are some military technologies like poison gas that are so horrendous, we just agree uni universally never to use these. Because if one side does and you do, it's just horrendous. That we need a Geneva Accord for cyber attacks. Because these are so pervasive and problematic. If we use them, they're going to use them. We all have to agree to just put these by the wayside. Do you think that's even possible? No, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I know where you're coming from, Leo. I mean... You've always been a huge advocate for security and privacy. Um, I've always been a little more relaxed about it. I mean, not for state secrets, obviously, obviously, obviously. Um, but like when it comes to targeted ads, for example. Yeah, I don't bother. Like, that doesn't honestly, bother me. No, I agree. I get some of my best ideas for reviews from the targeted ads, yeah. the tech products that show up. I'd rather but, see I ads mean, for a product I'm interested in than something I'm not interested in, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean – Although you did say something, you're like, we've probably all been hacked. Have you fooled around in the latest Mac and iOS operating systems in that new Safari password yeah. protocol checker? I love it, that. It shows you which of your passwords yeah. have been in a breach. Yep. It's amazing. And, 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 and Chrome, actually, there's something Firefox and Chrome that. have been doing for a while yeah. with extensions. One um, password also has a watchtower feature that right. like notifies you if you are if you double up on passwords on any given website if you right. uh, if it's been used in a breach if it's it I mean it prompts you for like a whole bunch of stuff which I use one password I that's like the I'm, password manager that I have been using and for a lot of credit to uh, to Troy Hunt of Have I Been Pwned because he's been the guy who yeah. has been keeping track of password breaches. Yeah. You can go to I haveibeenpwned.com and see if a password <laughs> that you use is is in these breaches. It almost always is. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think there's two things though, like what David was saying, there's like privacy and I get it. Like it's so privacy is like kind of so overblown with like, you know, I deal with like the average person that's watching the news and they're always worried about Facebook tracking them and Instagram and all this stuff. And like when it came to like the COVID-19, uh, you know, notification, exposure notification systems in California, everyone was like, no way, like that's government tracking me. I'm like, well, it's not, but, but I think there's <laughs> privacy and then there's security. And I think that like when it comes to your email and and your photos, like, I would hope that people want those to remain private. And that, you know, it seems like to me that companies like Google and all these other companies are trying to, they're almost protecting us from ourselves. Like when we use these, like I was helping my dad the other day with some photos and like I logged in with his password for my computer. And even though he doesn't have two factor on, it still said like, we think something's a little suspicious here because they saw I was logging in from California versus where he lives and where he typically logs in. I thought that was pretty smart. I was like, that's a good kind of protection that he wouldn't have in place, but you know, Google kind of figures that out. So I do think there's two things riding, which is privacy and security, which uh, they're not always the same. They do, but they do yeah. to some degree go together. I'll give you an example, David, of, of a privacy uh, invasion that actually re is related to this and could be a hazard. Apparently, uh, the United States has been using the Patriot Act to gather logs of website visitors. So the Patriot Act, which is, gives government very broad powers has been used by FBI to collect logs from websites that list everybody who's visited those web pages. Now, that's a privacy breach, but then when the government gets it, that becomes something a little, of a little more concern. And then when the government is breached, that becomes something of a little bit more concern. Mm. So they do tie together. And I'm with you. I'm not... Um, I'm not a, a privacy Puritan. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying, we, it's understandable. We trade a certain amount of privacy or a certain amount of convenience and, and usefulness. But at the same time, there is a relationship between your security and your privacy. And when you, I mean, the biggest tech companies are built on this. I mean, built on. Oh yeah, Google up, and Facebook. Like you said, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's that's, like, that's I mean, their Apple job. is really the only one that's like kind of yeah. done a pretty but good job of like just. you pay a premium for that. Exactly right. And that's why when people are like talking about how expensive Apple stuff is, it's like, well, yeah. when you go on the iPhone, the stuff that they have built into, you know, the latest operating system is like, it's pretty amazing. Like that one, like, I don't know if you download a new app and it says like, you know, do you want to share, I, we get the whole like one time share of your location, but then it goes into like, do you want to share your course privacy or your course location or your precise, which is something that like, Twitter is collecting people's exact locations for years now. And the fact that you can, you know, that Apple kind of realizes that and says, okay, you know what? Let's give them like city level versus like exactly where Rich DeBiro is tweeting from. Like I, that's pretty ingenious for Apple to, you know, and now I, I think Google's doing a little bit more of that, that with feels, their operating that system. That feels fair, right? Like that feels yeah, fair to me. Like it's like, okay, I get that there are some pieces of information that help these companies, these tech companies, make better products, do their job. You know, obviously like Apple's voice assistant that I'm not going to say her name because my home pod is going to go crazy. We call her Shlomo um, around here. She never responds yeah, to that. The thing is, is that's the exchange that we make for having, you know, if you own an Apple product, you're giving less data in that way to Apple. And so they're going to have a subpar product compared to the other voice assistants out there that collect a lot more information on a regular basis because it's because it's opt out not opt in. I'm a little cynical. I kind of feel like Apple would collect this information <laughs> if it could. Well, that, that's Absolutely. it, right? The only, it's not out of the goodness 100%. of their hearts. Yeah. They're not altruistic. No. It's just because their business model yeah. isn't selling ads. Well, right? also because they tried right. exactly to right. sell ads exactly. and that flopped. Their iAds yeah. product was a flop. So they made a virtue out of a failure and said, yeah. Hey, you know what? We don't want that information after That's all. Right. Classic Steve Jobs. And now yeah. it's a marketing. Classic now Steve it's marketing. Jobs. Because yeah. it's like yeah. every other company, like if you look at Amazon, I mean, all of the smart home products from the three big companies, you know, or I guess if you include Facebook, but the portal hasn't really taken off. But I mean, if you look at all those products, I mean, really they're, they're way, like I was thinking about this the other day because I've got the Google assistant here and I noticed when my kid said something, it, they stopped a timer and Google at the end said something. I can't remember what it was. It was like, by the way, you know, I can also do this. And oh, I was it like, drives me what? freaking nuts. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know. And, but, it's gotten uh, very, here's the thing. very verbose lately. <laughs> that's, 
that's getting us ready for a, an advertisement to be slipped in there that's where it right. can say, yeah. you know, you just asked for the a way. timer for your, yeah. Would you By be interested way, in you barbed wire for your on back 40? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There, there have been situations it's, where when I actually wished that Apple would take more of my data to be more Google-like, you, you know, in Google <laughs> Maps, when you're, when you put yeah. in a destination, you type one yes. character. And it right. means, and it's got it. I know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> you right. were there Apple 15 Maps times last year, David. <laughs> no, yeah. like yes. Google is like the ones like you put in one number and target, it says. It gives you Target in Nevada or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like, let me show you what I found on, on the Maps web. And it's like, hey, here's this place you went to 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Like, we remember that. And I'm just like, it's a little creepy, but also like, it's handy. Well, let me ask you, all three of you are. When Apple says we're the privacy company and they've sure doubled down on it over the last couple of years, do you trust them? Do you believe them? Do you use an iPhone because you feel like it's a safer device? David? Well, here's the thing. No. And how do you know any of them are telling the truth? Right. I mean, they, they show these declarations when you download an app. This app would like this data. They say, I mean, at a, at a certain point, you know, how do you, oh, by the way, Wilbur has something to say. Hey, Wilbur. The, uh, Wilbur's adorable. <laughs> Wilbur is a orange does cat. Wilbur care, does he care about his privacy? <laughs> he yeah. does. He makes it more than clear. <laughs> Leave um, me alone, human. <laughs> you know, it's funny with the, uh, you know, with the whole privacy thing when it comes to Apple, like, because I, I actually, I actually don't like that Apple protects my privacy because when you know when I'm using an Android device, it's kind of like that thing that David was talking about that we were just talking about, where you type in one letter and it kind of it auto completes exactly what it thinks you're searching for. Right. Whereas on my iPhone, because it doesn't collect all that data, it's like I have to type so many more things in. Like I, I'm like just doing more. You are labor lazy, because, Rich well, because tomorrow. It's not but is, I, is, really, is that wrong. the reason you want to give it all up so that, the, I, so that you, know, you don't have to type so much? <laughs> it's but it's easier. not just convenience, though. It's also annoyance. <laughs> like, honestly, iOS and macOS have gotten more and more and more annoying. I download yes. a photo app and it says this app would like access to your photos. Well, no kidding. Yes. It's well, a photos but, app. Oh, I, how about you, Ashley? Do you believe Apple when they say they're more? Let me open it. It said. They said this app is not trusted. Move to trash. And I was like, that was my only option. <laughs> no, that if annoys you didn't know me. Any better? None of my, you, none of your you, business. How would, yeah. How would my mom know to go into settings and go into, you know, the security thing and say, you know, open anyway? She would never find that. Right. A thousand percent. Right. How about you, Ashley? I, Do you trust Apple? So, I think of the four of us, uh, I'm the only not white man. Um, I believe you're correct. Panel. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I think that for me, I have seen uh, too many uh, friends. I've seen too many news stories about um, Rich. Rich made a really good point a little while ago that there's a difference between a targeted ad and somebody having access to say like your photos in a right. breach, right? Your private things you want to keep private. And, you know, I, I put pictures of my kid online every now and again, but I would not fire hose them on the internet. And, you know, I have picture, just, just cherished pictures of like my family stuff. Just, you know, I have a picture of my grandma in the ICU the day she passed away. Like oh. just pictures that like, I would never want made public. Yeah. I just would never want a but picture like that would you like trust iCloud with them? And, and I... I trust Apple enough to choose their product over other right. phone makers. So you'd put it on iCloud but not Google Photos? I think because of their stance on encryption, um, I am I am more inclined to choose Apple. Mm -hmm. um, if Google changed its mind, if they... I, it's it's a hard conversation to have because as David mentions, and it's a little bit of a cynic's take, but it's not untrue... <laughs> which is how much can you trust any of right. these tech companies to actually tell us what's going on, what they're actually collecting, how much they know about us, how much access they have. I mean, Apple can say all day long, like, we don't have access to X, Y, Z thing on your phone, but like, do we really know that? I We don't, you know, and and we may never know that. But, but at the end of the day, 
with the information that is in front of me and what I know and what I would like to protect, the 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 information I would like to protect, um, I I use an iPhone for that reason. And I I actually have gotten away from I left Gmail for that, which is this has been a wild uh, couple of months for me. Um, leaving Gmail has been like just very bizarre and extricating yourself from that ecosystem is difficult. Um, but I moved over to uh, Hey.com and... Oh, really? Yeah. You and, trust and, uh, David Heinemeyer Hansen with your email. Why <laughs> See, not? I'd be worried about the longevity of that email though. That's, you know... Well, so Basecamp uh, says that they're supporting it permanently. Like this is not a thing that they're going to sundown. Good. I actually, oddly enough, I, I think I trust Basecamp more than I trust Google to launch a new product and uh, <laughs> keep that alive because it just Seriously. literally just like kill you things. Can't trust Google. You can't trust Google. All the Google. time. So yeah. it's, you know, Gmail is like one of the few things that they haven't killed. Um, so I, so I'm, why not? I'm trying it out. I mean, all my stuff still stays on my, my Gmail account. It's, it's on that server. Um, but new emails now are going to that hey.com email address. It's funny. I did the same and, thing and a few years ago. I, oh, I moved sorry. everything off Gmail uh, a few years ago. I was using Gmail because they had the best Danny spam filtering. But once, mm -hmm. yeah, they, really once it didn't matter, uh, I started using Fastmail, which is an Australian uh, email provider, because I figured, well, I'm paying them. That's probably better than getting something for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm slowly weaning myself off of Google. I used to really love Google, but I, I'm starting to trust them less and less. And we're going to talk a little bit about their labor issues and firing uh, Timrit Jebru, which is pretty horrendous, and some of the things they've been doing lately. I feel like they're less and less trustworthy, if even because their attention span is so short. Yes, you know? 100%. And, and, and I do like trust the Apple. Photos thing. I do trust Apple, but I... But, one, what, the only way you should really trust a company is by looking at what their profit motive is, because their only job is to maximize profits. And I trust Apple to protect my privacy mostly because it's in their interest. It's in their profit interest. That's their business model. Mm -hmm. And the more that becomes a business model, the more I will trust them. Ultimately, though, uh, you know, uh, if, if what you're worried about is that they're going to give your grandmother grandmother's picture to the government, I wouldn't trust them because they will do that at the drop of a hat. Not that the I government mean, I, wants I think that. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just more of like, you know, we, we've we seen so many, like, let's say celebrities in these, you know, these like photo breaches. That was a while and stuff ago, like though. Right? A long time I, they ago. They fixed that. Yeah, but, but generally speaking, like for me, it's been um, partly what you were talking about with like, you know, I just, <laughs> you know, the the whole like, what is it? Don't be evil or... Yeah, that's and now, right? It's just, it really feels... <laughs> They're evil. Let's face it. It just feels bad. It feels, it all feels so bad. Like I left Facebook this year. I, oh, I, Facebook. I delete all my stuff from Facebook. Oh. I'm like, I just, I, I would like to stop supporting companies that I really feel are like actively harming as opposed to maybe like bumbling, I guess <laughs> bumbling sort of like ignorance har harm. Um, but it's just like it, it really to me, I just I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm like, I just I can't support that anymore. It's so like Facebook, for example. I just feel really strongly that yeah. um, it just is actively harming yeah. society. I don't want to give and them I, my and I, attention. I got to get I got one out of that system. And there yeah. is nothing I want more than to get out of Instagram or, yep. or have the government break it up. I'm just yep. I would like to be out of that ecosystem. I want an Oculus so bad no, and I just do will it. not buy one. Not I will not buy one. Because you have to have a Facebook account to do it. I'm not going to do yeah. it. Yeah. So let me ask you, because you started this, and I don't know, is it because we're white men, we're, we're, we, privacy is a, it's a privileged position we have about security and privacy that people of color and women can't afford? Is that kind I of? I think it's, I think it's, I think in my experience, and I, I can't speak for the larger, because I don't study it, I, I don't research it. Um, full disclosure there, like, and fully admitted. But in, in my experience and, and having been around tech for the, for over a decade at this point and, and talked to so many people about it, I have found that oddly enough, like just straight white men tend to, tend to care the least yeah. about, about giving their data away That's for something to return in. It is a privilege in a way. And, and there are a lot of people in this world who need 
anonymity. Right. Um, you know, there are people in other countries and our, maybe even in our country who are afraid of being tracked because they're, they're protesting something that is really important to them. And they, they don't want people to know who they are, or they're giving information, um, you know, to the public that they, you know, is really, is really sensitive. And, um, you know, for me, it's just, it's very much like I, every, every woman in tech that I know is like very protective of their data and very protective of their information. And, um, you know, I, I have this problem even outside of tech, you know, we have these scraper sites in California where, where for whatever reason, like, I don't know how it is in other states, but, you know, we have these like, what is it like Spokio or whatever, where you can look up oh, a person horrible. and their address. Yeah. And it's just, why does this exist? Like we have this, um, cause it's public problem. information. It's, it's public information, but why does it have to be public information? Yeah. I could have, I, I remember yeah. the time where you could be like unlisted in the phone book, right? right. Like you pay but a you little pay extra or whatever and you, yeah. yeah, you pay for that. But the thing is, is like, this is sort of how we built this and technology came along and we just said, well, we'll just keep doing what we were doing before without actually considering the ramifications of that, which is now not only can I look somebody up in a, in a phone book, the phone book is now the entire world. And so it's the internet. And so for me, you know, California Today, or any other state allowing this should not allow these things. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The FTC is talking. So let me shut, let me shut them. <laughs> you would think of all the websites in the world, they would not have autoplay. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're trying to get their so video Ashley, numbers up. Jesus There's Christ. <laughs> Stop it. So Ashley, it's, it sounds like that you're retreating from Facebook and Google is not about, uh, you are afraid that they can get access to your data and some human is going to look at it. It's more a general discomfort with their negative effect on society. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's mostly that it's, it's sort of that like, um, lesser of all evils where I'm just like, I, I feel so uncomfortable. The line has been so crossed, uh, with those companies in a lot of ways that I just can't, I can no longer bring myself to, to, to put myself in their ecosystems. Like that's a, it's a big thing for me. So it's not necessarily that I really feel an, an extra level of trust with Apple, but it's that at least at, th at the base level of it, like Rich was saying, I know that their business model and, and Leo is like their business model sort of relies on protecting user information. And so at, at the very, just the bare minimum lowest bar at least they can sort of like half clear that. Like yeah. that's that's how I feel about it. It's just, it's it's so, you know, I, I think you're right. We can't just, you can't take any of these companies' word. I mean, it's just, it's all a bunch of corporate, you know, yeah, back they, speak. They have a f responsibility to their stakeholders to make money as right. whatever way they can. That's, I, I've never, I've never gotten on board with, you know, being, making part of your identity I know. A, a product or a company. Yeah. And this is why I used to be Android Ashley. Like when I started yeah. out in this yeah. industry, I was Android Ashley. Yeah. And I remember getting death threats and rape threats. What? When I got an, I, I had tweeted, I got an iPhone as a second Ugh. line. Ugh. Just to know what the competition was. Ugh. That was it. That was all. The only reason I got an you? iPhone. And, and I got so many awful emails <laughs> from people who were just furious. And, you know, I just, to me, I can't, there are things I am enthusiastic about. There are things I am a fan of. Like I, I, there are certain things I absolutely love. There are game companies that I love and there are tech companies that I really enjoy and there are products I really like and, and I will tell my friends about them and evangelize about them because I, I enjoy them and I think they're good. But, but at the end of the day, I just, I can't attach my identity yeah. to any of these companies. Right. And I think that that's actually one of the biggest problems um, that we see in in sort of like the the consumer base, we've sort of turned it into this like it's not just tech, Ashley. Weird. This is universal. This tribalism. Yeah, this tribalism is, is like it's, it's winners and losers. It's yeah. no longer oh, yeah. sort of it's yeah, it's just winners and losers, and it's like it it just doesn't have to be that. Like yeah, it, it just never has to be that. You had people stabbing each other in Washington D.C. over the election. The tribalism has gone way beyond any. I don't know. Maybe it's not new. Maybe we've always been this way. Um, you know, Protestants We've always killed been Catholics this way, but for years, and you supercharged now because of the internet and Maybe. places like Facebook. Yeah, and places and like Twitter. Facebook. Social Somebody, media. Yep. Social media. Yeah. Does anybody know what that? Um, that there was a again, like there was something I had read where they said, imagine every single person in the world getting their own newspaper written exactly for them 
to tell them only the news that they want to hear. And like, that's basically the internet. Yeah, you that's don't have, have to imagine. Right yeah. And it's like, that's, that's what it yeah. is. It's it, that it, everyone gets, no one's getting the same. Yeah. Everyone gets this little individualized thing. And I don't know that it's necessarily I, a good I thing. I personally have slugged somebody because he uses VI instead of Emacs. It, and so I, <laughs> I completely understand how, how vicious these battles can become. No, it's a shame that you got death threats. That's terrible. I, you know, it's That's it, ridiculous. It's like, I hate saying it's like, oh, it's just being a lady in tech, but it kind of is. Like, every, I don't know anybody who hasn't experienced no, that. No, it's as every woman. woman in technology. Every it's woman. Terrible. Yep. The other thing is that Twitter and to some degree Facebook enable this kind of drive by hate. It's so yeah. easy. Growth and engagement. It's G and E. So, yeah. And it's so low cost that I think yeah. people do and say things that they wouldn't normally. Yeah. Do and say being abusive is easy, easy. and 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 yeah. free. Yeah, uh, I want to take a little break. We should get to. We've been circling around this, but we should get to this. Facebook has been sued for uh, monopolization by the FTC, forty-six states, DC, and Guam. Uh, this is a big lawsuit. Uh, unlike perhaps some of the other lawsuits we've seen recently, I don't think it's political. I think this one's uh, pretty serious. Um, but we will, uh, stock market didn't agree, but we'll talk about it when we come back in just a little bit. Great panel here. David Pogue and his cat. What's his name? This is Wilbur. Wilbur. Hello, Wilbur. Wilbur. Uh, adorable. Uh, we've got uh, Rich Demuro and his little teeny weeny Christmas tree. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley and uh, Jack Skellington. They're all here. Doing the show today. We thank you all for being here. It's always uh, fun to get together with my favorite people and um, talk about tech. And we do often end up talking about privacy. I mean, that and security. That really is often the topic. Our show today uh, brought to you, uh, as it often is, by Stamps.com. The holidays are upon us. That means the post office is going to be busy. More people mailing stuff. Why go to the post office when you can do everything you want to do at home, stamps.com brings the post office and now UPS as well, right to your computer with just a few clicks. We've been using stamps.com forever since 2012. I love it because uh, any letter, any package, anything I want to mail, I could just do right from the computer with stamps.com. I get a better deal on everything. Five cents off every first class stamp up to 40% off priority mail. And now they have UPS, too. So if you're doing any shipping at all, you've really got to get stamps.com. 62% in some cases, up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. And, one of the, and, I, and I have to say, if you're doing any shipping at all, if you're an Etsy seller or an Amazon or eBay seller and you're not using stamps, you're just missing the boat. It's just the best. You'll look more professional. You'll save time and money. <laughs> uh, every once in a while, I get stuff from Etsy. It's got hand-licked stamps on it. Never enough, by the way. And there's nothing more insulting than getting something, yeah, excuse me, uh, mailman comes to my door. Uh, you need to give me a buck 63. It's postage due. It's like, I don't... It's embarrassing. And they're tied with, just use stamps.com. You get a, a USB scale, so you always have exactly the right postage. It will print your logo on the label. It'll print your return address automatically. It'll even take the shipping address from eBay or Amazon or Etsy or your address book. So less typing means fewer mistakes. It's just no wonder almost a million small businesses use stamps.com. I don't know why you're not. Don't spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Sign up risk-free for stamps.com instead. And by the way, when you use stamps.com, it's amazing. A uniformed uh, employee of the federal government will come to your door and pick up your mail. Just like that. You don't even, <laughs> Or you can drop it in the mailbox. It's, a, it's just the best way to go. Right now, we've got an offer that is mind-boggling. Go to stamps.com. Click the microphone. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, you want to use the offer code TWIT for this, T-W-I-T. You'll get a four-week trial plus free postage. The digital scale is yours. No long-term commitment. Stamps.com. Click the microphone. Enter the code TWIT. You'll save money. You'll love it. Your life will be better. Stamps.com. Enter the offer code TWIT. This year of all years, no need to go to the post office. Do everything you need at your desk with Stamps. Dot. Sweet. Come. Just, just one second. So you get five cents off of every first class stamp. Yeah. 
How can they do that? We, we lose money on every stamp, but we make it up in bonds? <laughs> I, there's a subs I don't know. The post office gives them a deal, for one, because of their volume. Post office loves, you know, David, you know Indicia, right? This is the, yeah. uh, the thing when you print a stamp with stamps.com. There used to be other companies doing this. I think Stamp owns them all, including Indicia. But they're, that's called Indicia. And there's a barcode on it and stuff. It speeds up the mail for the post office so much because they can scan that that I think they actually want you, they really prefer you do that. The other thing that happens, it, normally you can't put a package that's greater than a pound in the mail that since 9-11. Um, you have to bring it to the post office so they can look at you and say, are you a terrorist? But because stamps.com and Indicia ties to your account, they don't, you can, po you can po put it in the post office box. It doesn't matter if it's more than a pound. So there's, the post office wants you to do this. There's also, let's be honest, there's a subscription with stamps.com. I don't know how much of that goes towards it as well, but it's not that much. So, it, I mean, there's no, it's not like you get a nickel off every stamp up to the first 10. It's like forever. So I don't, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't understand why people don't use it, but this is not. Dude, if you were, if you were an Etsy shipper or something oh, or an crazy. Amazon associate. Yeah. You got to use it. And they've acquired pretty much everybody, uh, who uh, used to do this? So you pretty much—that's the—that's the one to go with. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, that's not part of the ad either. So, F <laughs> Wednesday, Federal Trade Commission came out with a 124-page uh, lawsuit, which I read from cover to cover. Fascinating. Indicting a Facebook for. Um, monopolistic practices. They had a lot of, you know, clearly they've been doing their research for a long time. They had emails. They had a lot of internal information. They had what I consider in many cases smoking guns. Mark Zuckerberg saying, yeah, we got to buy uh, Instagram and put them out of business, things like that. Uh, it seems to me to be an open the shut case, but the pro I'm sure it won't be. I'm sure it'll go on for years. The, the problem is, what's the remedy? You can't, my wife was saying this uh, the other day. She said, you can't, it's like you can't make them s get rid of Instagram and WhatsApp now. Like you gave them permission years ago. You can't say, oh, sorry, we take it back. Or can you? Actually, this is really interesting. First of all, I, I also read the entire thing. I was, weren't you impressed yes. at how like plain English and well-written it was? Very well-written. Whoever wrote it. Uh, it wasn't legalese. No. It was but, very but, clear, and I thought uh, kind of in, in a damning indictment, to be honest. So Mark Zuckerberg's argument against this is, whoa, 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 FTC, you approved our purchase oh, of these he's companies. Right. In the well, he's, he's right, but he's also wrong, because I also looked up the actual approval uh. letter from the FTC when it happened, and the last line, you can look this up online, is we reserve the right oh. at any point— to change our mind. To revisit this uh, decision. Okay. And now they are. And you could make the case when they bought Instagram, Nova, you know, it was a little company that had five employees. They weren't huge. Although the in the indictment, the, they make the strong case that they were already so successful that it was legitimate for Facebook to say, these guys could eat our lunch. But a lot of people say, oh, oh Instagram wouldn't have been Instagram. WhatsApp wouldn't have been WhatsApp if Facebook hadn't bought them. Uh, but it was very clear, I think, that they, Facebook looked at these companies and others like Snapchat. They mentioned a company that Facebook tried to buy forever, but they didn't say the name. I, that had to be Snapchat, right? I don't know. Yeah, why Why do you think they redacted I don't know. so much of that document? It was Probably. Weird. They redacted like weird things too. Like it was like yeah. how many users they had every month. I was like, isn't that like public knowledge? I think that that wasn't. That's the point, which is that they had internal documents and they were probably rightly so, being a little protective of Facebook's uh, privileged business information, that they had mm -hmm. access to stuff that wasn't public. Must have been, right? Otherwise, but the document, the document makes a really good case that uh, Facebook either bought companies and subsumed them, like WhatsApp and Instagram, or just bought them to shut them down. They named Glancy yeah. and another one. They just bought them and then... And they said, this is all a screaming violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, right? And you read this document, you're like, of course. Like, I, very obviously, it's damning. this is a violation. Yeah. Well, but wait a minute. But, but, but I kept thinking, but they all 
do this. <laughs> Apple, right. Google, Microsoft, they all buy up companies and shut them down. Well, remember, so what's the difference? remember, David, you and I, of course, are old enough to remember 1998 Microsoft DOJ. And Microsoft was predatory in the 90s, right? Same thing, engulf and devour, right? The whole idea, Microsoft would go take a meeting with a company, get all of the information about the company, say, yeah, thanks anyway, and then duplicate it over and over again. DOJ came after him. It was a protracted battle. I know it was a long time because it started the day Tech TV launched. And it, and even after Tech TV went out of business, it was still going on. So I know it was a long battle. Uh, eventually, there was a consent decree. Microsoft allowed uh, an ombudsman inside the company to watch over them. But I think more than anything, the effect of the DOJ lawsuit against Microsoft was to chasten them, to make them in their boardroom say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that. Uh, that that would ups, you know, that could cause more problems for us. And I, I, I would bet that some of the benefit of this, whether they succeed against Facebook or not, is to get Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon especially, to sit up and take notice and say, look, the government is... Not a complete pushover. <laughs> it's mostly a pushover. They let NBC, Universal, and Comcast merge. Uh, they let AT and T acquire yeah, well, Warner, HBO, yeah. and Turner. <laughs> I, I think. But. I think the bigger. I think the the issue here. I mean, I look at this from two ways. Number one, what's the benefit to the consumer of breaking up Facebook? Like, does how does it make my life any better? Or you know, do you want me to answer um, that? I think that's. Well, uh, in a second, but I think the other part is. Um, if you start a company, there is almost no way to compete with these large companies That's at it. this point. That's the answer they to your first you question. And you're done. Right. So, I mean, it's like, it's like, I don't even know how Dropbox is still, you know, uh, functioning when you've got, you know, it's like they're this small company compared, you know, and, they, and they're buying up little companies. But it's like, you can't start a messaging app today and have it compete with what right. is already out there. That's I don't know, the answer you to your could. question. That's the harm. So there's consumer okay, so harm, but there's the business harm. harm. Yeah, there's no innovation okay. because you can't compete. Is somebody going to start a search engine? Is somebody going to start a, a social yeah, network yeah. to compete with Facebook today? You'd be nuts. Yeah. Right. In fact, and, and and just, even just you know, photo, a consumer, a photo social worse. platform. Right. I mean, you're just going to get eat, just, you're either going to get worse. eaten up by Facebook or you're going to get bought by Facebook and either integrated and shut down. Right. Right. And now I have to say, Kevin all, Sistrom of, of, of Instagram is probably very happy that he got a billion dollars from Facebook. He's not crying, although he wasn't happy with what Facebook did to Instagram and eventually left. Uh, the founders, see, like he's a guy that might start a, a company that's similar to Instagram, but it will it ever take no. off? You know, would it he would it ever he, be able to get no. somewhere? If he wanted to, he could have, but he knows. It's like I'm not doing that. Here's another yeah. example: uh, the way Amazon. It's actually almost tragic. Remember diapers.com was created to sell diapers. What Amazon did is they undercut them. They undercut them. They took all their business. Then they bought them. And of course the founder of diapers.com was so, you know, he, he got his payday, but he was so upset with the way this happened that he went out and he started jet <laughs> and jet didn't succeed too well. Cause Amazon, Walmart bought yeah. him. He had another big payday. I'm sure he's not broke. But it's very hard to compete against these mammoth companies. Even Walmart's having a hard time competing against Amazon. Well, I think the goal at this point is not to compete. It's to get to, to get, get bought. bought. That's right. You know, right. but the thing is, is you end up with a Facebook who will look at, you know, Snapchat's a great example. They there was a there was interest there. They thought, you know, and then Evan was like, no. And then uh, Mark Zuckerberg decided to crush them, you know, and it's like they just, oh, okay, well, let's just copy everything that they're doing. How? It, so that's an interesting question. You're right. I mean, they copied them completely. Uh, Instagram stories are, you know, that's Snapchat, yeah, basically. Snapchat. Yeah. Um, has that hurt Snapchat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're not I mean, as big Snapchat, as they were. I mean, they, they're, I mean, I don't know if they're not as big. I'm sure they're bigger than ever, but it's, you know, how the growth there has, you know, the trajectory of growth has been severely diminished ever since Instagram mm -hmm. stories took, they you know, could took have on the been, life of its own. They could have been a new Facebook. Yeah, it could have been its own thing where like stories, yeah. this format of telling a, a story with stories 
is this is where you go for that. And now it's become, it's kind of like, I always say this, it's like RST, LNE and Wheel of Fortune. It's now like the table stakes. It's like, yeah, everyone we'll give has you that. It, you know? We'll give you that. We'll give you stories. Uh, you want WhatsApp? Do we give you stories? You want to shop on Amazon? You can shop via stories. It's like every app now has stories. LinkedIn has stories. Slack has Everything. stories, which is the we worst fleet, idea. Guys. Let's go, let's go right up our fleets. <laughs> right, fleets. exactly. Twitter has fleets. stories. Did we just yeah. call them fleets? Fleets. Yeah, there's stories. Yeah. But the FTC complaint actually said that, that, that Zuckerberg was worried about WhatsApp becoming a social media right. feed like Facebook. Mm -hmm. Right. He was like, yeah. we got to shut them down before they become like us. And the other th thing I thought was weird about that complaint by the FTC in the States is that it said this is unfair to the advertisers. Like who's who's worried about how they're harmed? Right. But it said that. Oh, I, I am. I think forget about small us. Businesses, it's about, if it's you're, about money. No, if you're if you're a small business and you're spending money on Amazon to try to get your, you know, here's what they do on Yelp. You you know you set up your thing on Yelp, and next thing you know, to get anywhere, you've got to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month just to get some you know some traction there. And same thing with Google. And the bigger these companies get, the more you have to spend. That's sort of unnecessary, right? It used to be you took out a big ad in the yellow pages, everyone kind of flipped through, whatever. But now it's like it's just the more companies that are, you know, the bigger they get, the more you have to spend. And a lot of that spending is is in my kind of eyes, nonsense spending. Like you're just spending to get back to where you were. I think and there's that, another I think, another reason you know, they brought it up, David. So traditionally, antitrust actions in the United States have focused on consumer harms. And, and it's always been said in Europe, they focus on innovation, on, on competing with other companies. And I think that there's a new generation of people uh, in Congress and in regulation in the federal government who are saying, you know, we got to consider both consumer harm and harm to innovation, harm to other companies. And so I think what you're seeing there, you remember that the, uh, the action uh, that the DOJ took against Google also it, actually, it was Congress. I'm sorry. The Democratic, uh, uh, only the Democratic half of the antitrust committee uh, in uh, in uh, Congress brought this exact thing up, and they said our antitrust laws have to perhaps be adjusted for the new new era to consider both consumer harm and uh, in innovation harm. And I think when you're talking about regulating big tech, that's a big part of it. And ultimately, just as you said, Rich, it's consumer harm, but. What happens is these companies become so big you can't compete against them, it kills innovation. And so they just become more and more entrenched. And that's both a harm to other businesses and to consumers in the end. So I think that's I think there was a specific reason they brought up advertisers. In fact, as I'm reading this, uh, I'm seeing a lot. I'm reading, but maybe I'm over interpreting it, but I'm seeing behind the lines a lot. That's what I'm I agree with you. It was so thoughtfully written that clearly they were anticipating some of the objections that uh, judges might have to this. I think they're going for a judge, a decision by a judge as opposed to a jury decision. This was clearly aimed, I think, at the bench as opposed to uh, a, a jury. It's very, you know, there's a lot going on. I'm not a le great legal mind. I'm not a lawyer or anything. But I find, uh, to me, this is kind of fascinating, is to kind of understand there's a game going on. There's a chess game going on. And the people who designed this, uh, complaint, I think we're very, very thoughtful about what they mentioned and brought up in this. Um, so we could go on and on. This is we, 124 pages. We got a lot to talk about. Let's not. <laughs> but what I'm curious about from all three of you, I'll start with you, Ashley, is what would be the out, a good outcome for this? Would it be breaking up the company? Uh, would it, I mean, what, how, what could government do to fix what is clearly a problem with Facebook. I mean, it does feel like it's one of those weird things where it feels like what needed to be done was those <laughs> those uh, acquisitions should have just never happened, right? So, but we can't get into time machine. We can't go back. Well, we can, as David pointed out, we could roll those back. I mean, I don't yeah, know what but that I mean, it feels like. like okay. So you break up, you break that up, but then also it does feel like maybe there's some. Like regulation, some sort of. Um, do you put you do what they did with Microsoft? Right. Put somebody inside the company to watch and say, "Don't do that." Maybe 
maybe, or maybe it just comes down to a watchdog group that is that is making sure that that companies are not blatantly ripping off features from other <laughs> companies, right? So it's like, you know, like for me, I feel like Snapchat made something really good and they should have been rewarded for that, right? right? Like right. having it completely just, you know, basically stolen, like the, the entire concept of it stolen um, and tweaked in a very minor way and been like, oh, no, no, see, clearly ours is different because they're uh, not horizontal. You have to swipe left and right and not up and down or whatever it is. You know, to me, that that seems like a good way to sort of say like, hey, like if you make something really great, you should be rewarded for that. And it should not be able to be blatantly ripped off by these other big tech companies. See, I'm, I do with what you do, Ashley, which is I don't participate in the ecosystem. I don't like Facebook. I don't trust Mark Zuckerberg. I think we're going to find out he is amoral. I don't think he's immoral or evil, but he is amoral. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, it's not, he's not a good steward of, of Facebook. But it's also, I should point out, we, we're, a privil we, we're privileged to do that. There are a lot of people, that's the mm -hmm. only way they Very can. Very much. That's the only way they can contact family. It's right. the only way that they have uh, access to. There are some places where, you know, they have that, uh, there are emerging markets where they have a slimmed down version of Facebook yeah, that is internet. designed for, yeah. you know, yeah. And it's, it is their internet yeah. and it's, it's, that's their internet. So yeah, absolutely. We're coming from a place of privilege. Um, so, so I understand that not tough. everybody can give up on Facebook. Yeah. Um, Rich, is there a, is there a, what, what would the outcome of this, what would be a positive outcome of this lawsuit? Uh, I, again, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, the positive outcome could be. Because right. if you look at a company like Facebook, and I think about this with Google and with Apple, I mean, and Apple, all these big companies, it's like, you know, we talk about the things that they do really well. And Facebook, what they do really well is they're a social network and they've done really well with their advertising and they've done really well with Instagram. And so I think about like, okay, if we broke them up, what would be the benefit? So it would be that Instagram would now be able to compete against Facebook in the social media category. Um, when you look at messaging with Facebook, it's like, sure, they're a leader there, but I mean, they're not the only messaging game in town. It's not like nobody else uses any. In fact, I don't really know anyone that uses Facebook Messenger at all. And now WhatsApp, that's probably a different story, especially outside yeah, Facebook of the US. doesn't care if you use WhatsApp, they're happy. Right. They well, don't and now care. they're all merged. Right. Now you've got instant. You can cross-platform message between Instagram and Facebook, and I think WhatsApp is coming uh, soon down the line as well. So, I mean, I see things like that. So it's like, now personally, you know, I think in some ways that's better because I'm like, oh, finally, all the people that will only be on Instagram, I can finally message through Facebook Messenger and vice versa. But I don't know. I'm just trying to think what would be the benefit. And I think the the point that I brought up earlier is really what I keep going back to. It's like. I, as a consumer, want the most innovation. You know, if I own a small business, I want the best ways to advertise. And right now, I see three ways to advertise, which is Google, Facebook, and Yelp. And that's it. And so a small company to come along, like, can't really get into that game. Or, you know, I want um, the best messaging platform. And it's like, well, another little company is not going to come along and do that because they just don't have all the, the ways and means of getting people to sign up or a photo service. You know, like I want a better photo service, but you know, Facebook got out of the photo service. I mean, they it used to be, you could upload all your pictures there and keep them there. And now they don't even care about that. So, um, you know, I don't know what the solution would be, why it would be better if they were broken up at this stage in the game. I think it's more about the innovation being stifled. I do see that as being a huge part of this. Yeah. David solution. Yeah, That's my I, problem I with this is I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how you fix this. Well, part of the problem is that what we're discussing is the way the entire tech world works. I mean, they've all bought up their rivals to shut them down. Right. Um, they've all stolen ideas from each other blatantly. I, I don't know if anyone remembers this. I'm sure they don't. But I spent five years at Yahoo. And <laughs> once when I was there, I, I wrote a really what I thought was a really cool article. You guys know, above all how tribal Mac, I mean, so oh, yeah. Apple versus Google are, oh, yeah. iPhone versus Android. I mean, they, oh, yeah. they hate each other. They blast us when they give something a good review. So, and they always say, Pogue, you said that portrait mode feature on the new iPhone <laughs> is a cool feature, but Samsung had it first. First, so, five wow. years ago. I, exactly. <laughs> so I did this massive research project where I tracked down 168 wow. standard features 
and found out who had it first. Wow. Turns out Google had long pressing first, but Apple had uh, stre- you know, pinching and spreading first to enlarge a right. picture. And Samsung had portrait mode. They all steal Everything. all the time. Yeah. You're not going to be able to But we want that. that as consumers. I don't want a phone that has no none of the benefits of Android in my iPhone or vice versa. We want that cross pollinization. That makes well, both and, products better. And this is the other thing going back to kind of like these this innovation stifling. Like you would think with these big companies being in the positions they are, that they'd be able to get into any business they want, but we've seen them fail over and over. So like Facebook or uh yeah, Facebook and Amazon tried to make a phone that failed horrendously. Right. Um, you know, Apple has, I'm sure, you know, there's been like that social media network they tried with their music service that failed. I mean, there's a lot of things that like these companies, just because they're huge, don't necessarily aren't able to just like, I mean, look at Microsoft, they have billions and billions of dollars and Bing cannot figure out a way to get people to search on it. And they tried but for many you, years. But now the they thing gave is, up. Is like, but do you are, but I would argue that that is because that, because Google has created a natural monopoly there, just like. Apple and Google have created a natural monopoly for phones, right? So it's like, you know, Facebook could try well, to launch a phone now, but it's too late, you know? And that's why not? Anyone can make a better. I mean, why can't I mean there's so many Android phones that come out every year. I test every single one of them, and 99% of them are horrible and they that's don't true. compete with the iPhone. So <laughs> that's I mean it's really right, true. they're not meant to be flagship devices. Right. These are meant to be devices for people who can't afford a flagship device, who can't who who just need a cell phone, you know? And the thing is, is like wow. To me, it's they tried uh, that. Like, what was I that argue, big company, the Andy Rubin company? What was that essential. one? That was like, you know, essential. Oh my yeah. gosh, it was supposed yeah. to be so amazing, and it was like literally the worst. I mean, it was a, <laughs> it was a great slab, but like the camera was so it's bad. Who would, yeah. It was yeah. twenty years well, old. Well, it was like taking pictures on a potato. But it's like you know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's it's that you know, even the biggest companies are struggling to get into verticals where a natural monopoly or duopoly already exists. Like, and that I guess to me is even more of an argument that these companies should not be this big. Like, they just but, shouldn't. But I don't think anybody wants a heavy-handed federal agency to come in and say, if, no. if this had happened at Microsoft, they would not have made Microsoft weaker. They would have made Microsoft stronger. They would have divided Microsoft, this was one of the plans, into three or four companies, each of which would be bigger than Microsoft today is. And they would have been worse uh, they we they tried that with uh, Ma Bell. They broke up AT and T, and what happened? We just got a lot of baby bells that just reunited, and now there's it's yeah. in some ways it's worse. So <laughs> I, I don't think they all came back together at the yeah, end. Yeah, right? I don't think the government. I don't think breaking. I don't know what the answer is. Okay, I'm gonna throw in one thing that this is a minefield, and I shouldn't bring it up. If I were smart, I would just shut up. But I honestly <laughs> think that social media. We kind of touched on this a little bit. Social media has been bad for democracy. It's been bad for this oh, country. 100%. Because it's like what you said, Ashley, everybody's got their own personal newspaper filled with facts that they're sure of and no one else agrees with. Mm -hmm. That's a big, to me, that's the real hazard of Facebook is that so many Americans, that's where they get their news. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. the real hazard. And I don't I, think there's I, anything you can do about that. That's protected by the First Amendment. I mean, you can't, I don't know what the government would do. You don't, I wouldn't want the government to come in and say, well, you shouldn't have post posts about anti-vax posts. Sure, of you course shouldn't. not, no. I wouldn't want that. But also, but Mark but also Zuckerberg Facebook, isn't going to do a good job of that either. Exactly right. It's like you cannot rely on the, you cannot rely on a board of investors to make decisions that are moral decisions because they because it never works out though they they want to make money they're, so their are goal we is stuck to with this income. who is well, wait a minute well, wait a minute though because one of one of the topics on the potential topics list for today was the fact that all these executives are leaving Facebook pissed and he, off as each one yeah. leaves they leave a note a farewell note to their company and they say the reason I'm leaving is because I can't stand how little this company is doing yeah. to stop misinformation and hate speech. So obviously but, there is a sector, there are people but, who think that Facebook should be in the business of regulating hate That's speech the and misinformation. And, and yeah, let's, but but how, they're not making how do you, decisions, where right? do you, they're not, how they're do not you do high that? Do you think, make those do you think Mark how? cares? You think Mark yeah. looks at these yes, guys I, and goes, oh, I got to do better. 
<laughs> I think he cares. I think I don't think he wants because he's looking at the growth of Facebook, and if Facebook is is synonymous with misinformation, which it sort of is right now, that is not a good uh, trajectory to be on. Now, imagine you know I, I work for a news organization, right? I mean, we are. And I, you know, I've been in the newspaper world and the in the TV world and the radio. And like the whole point of like the system that was built of journalism in America for you know the past whatever years is you had reporters and editors and fact checkers, and you put stuff out there that you believe to be true to the best of your knowledge. Well, that's and that gone. was all upended <laughs> by anyone being able to start a blog right. and putting a link on Facebook and sending it out to right. a million a billion people. Right. So the system has changed. And I don't know what the answer is, but like you can't can't go through every link on Facebook and they try AI and this and that, but like sure. who even sits there and fact checks every single web page that is immediately put up with information on it? And you have bots. I mean, there's yeah. just too many things going on. That's and the I, bigger I, issue here. I do argue though that I people I know who are not either journalists or in tech, like don't necessarily put misinformation in Facebook together immediately. Like they, they trust Facebook. Uh, they don't, they don't read this. They, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care that I, it's I think people, I think people have a good understanding that, I mean, I, I get, I, I understand what you're saying, Ashley, like when. Oh, I, I don't I'm know, Rich. You should have seen well, my, my timeline before I quit was just well, full of people who were convinced that, you know, these crystals were going to cure their COVID or whatever. It's well, just right. like and the And that's the other thing. So. Remember, you know, the whole thing of people would post something on Facebook and you'd look at it and you'd be like, are you kidding? Like, how are people debating this? And like one of your friends would put like the Snopes link and like no one even cares. They don't even like they're still they debating it, even with like the, you know, yeah, they don't care. That's the, that's well, the problem. They don't, they don't care. So let's let's talk turkey here. What would be the potential remedies? So there's put the company up. There's massive fines. Um, Leo, is anyone in the chat uh, coming up with any ideas? Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next time. Uh, let me look. <laughs> it's just, it's such an impossible problem because, you know, the thing yeah. is, is I, I completely understand that, you know, without, if we had broken up Microsoft decades ago, it would not have done the things that it did. But I also argue that is there, is there, was alternatively, there could have been, 10 tech companies that all competed with each other to make good products. And we could have gotten to a similar, albeit different place with 10 different CEOs who make, you know, marginally less than what Bill Gates was making at Microsoft. It's it's my and strong opinion that the DOJ action at Microsoft had very beneficial mm -hmm. impacts, that they didn't need to break up Microsoft. A micro did a two. Th I mean, we wouldn't have a Google if that if they hadn't intervened, but because of that, we got the innovation that second wave of innovation in the two thousands, and I also think that Microsoft was forced to reconsider its its goals, and they've pivoted, and it's been good yeah. for Microsoft. It's Microsoft is a better company now than it was in nineteen ninety eight. So, I don't. I think that whatever happened with the DOJ and Microsoft. And as long as it went on, it was in the. It was absolutely beneficial. It absolutely did the right thing. I, I I'm hoping the same thing will happen with people, this. I just, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I just think more people with good ideas deserve a shot at at having I a agree. great tech company. And and I, I, that's all I want. And I, I don't know how to make that happen. I don't and think if you I did, can force it. Be doing something else right now, but yeah. um. But yeah, it's just, it's such a hard, it. it's a hard problem. It's a hard problem. It's a hard problem. I mean, uh, it's not that there's no room for new winners to bubble up. No. I mean, who'd heard of sure. TikTok a couple years ago? Right. I mean, it still can happen if the idea is good enough. TikTok's But if you don't want to sell your idea to a major company, more than likely, you're not going to be a TikTok. You're going to get crushed. You're going to get copied and you're going to get crushed. Yeah, but TikTok's not trying well, to get Well, but acquired. how did TikTok do it? I mean, they, yeah. you know, they were able to bubble up in this environment and break out in a way that an we haven't seen. That's an anomaly. No, that's, that's what, what happens. I, I call that an outlier. But I think, it's, 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 but we're going to see that yeah. it's not going to happen very often, you know, and that's the thing. But when it happens, I mean, look at TikTok is, is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, so it's not, it's not something that does happen every day, you know, but it, but it, can still happen is is I just argue it should know. happen more. 
Like we should have more competition. There is no competitor. There's no natural competitor for Instagram. Name one. Right. There's there's none. There's literally I've looked. But there's there also no uh, competitor a history for of government intervention that has killed competition. All you have to do is look at internet service providers in the United States and the duopolies that are in most communities, thanks to the FCC, mm -hmm. to realize that government intervention isn't always the solution. It could actually no. make the problem worse. Yeah. But it's just, it's not good the way it is now. So it's just, you yeah. know, why not try something else? To is, me, I guess that's it's not the, the monopoly that Facebook is or even their any competitive behavior that scares me. It's the dominant position they have in the culture. And mm -hmm. I really... I think if Mark, of info. yeah, I mean, I don't think Mark would do this, but, but we don't know. What if Mark Zuckerberg decided, I want this to happen. I think he has the, the dials and switches to do it. He's got the most powerful mass medium mm -hmm. in the history of mankind easily better right. than any television network, any movie company. I was watching, it's a great movie, Mank, the Netflix. Oh, uh, very good. Isn't mm -hmm. it great? It's black very and white, good. shot like it was in the 30s. It's a story of the writing of Citizen Kane. And at one point, Herman Mankiewicz, who's the you know protagonist in the in the movie. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman's brilliant. Played by God, fabulous Gary Oldman. Goes, uh, you know, Louis B. Mayer's giving him a hard time, and he talked to Irving Thalberg, movie guy, and he says... You know what the, the issue is uh, that Upton Sinclair, a socialist, uh, is running for governor and mayor doesn't want him. William Randall first doesn't want him. And Mankiewicz says, what are you worried about? You control a movie studio. You can kill mm -hmm. this guy's candidacy. And a light goes on in Irving Thal Thalberg's brain. He says, oh, my God, that's right. We'll just make a bunch of phony newsreels that lie about the candidate. And they and they, of course, they were yeah. very, very successful. That's nothing compared to what Facebook could do. And not yeah. just in the U.S., but with two Everywhere. and a half billion people all over the world. They've been used by despots and dictators in the Philippines and Myanmar. Uh, they clearly are the most powerful medium ever. The human, And there's nothing and there's to stop no them control. from if Mark Zuckerberg decided he wanted to run for president in 2024. He could do it. He could do it. And there's nothing stopping Facebook he from could. omitting negative stories no, about he him. He could have elected him. He could have elected anybody he wanted president in 2020. He really could. To his credit, he didn't mess with the dials. But the fact that he didn't <laughs> doesn't mean But like Twitter went the extra step and was like just no political ads. Like yeah. it's just there's there are ways you can take the extra step and there was just a, a choice to That's remove risky yourself. too. Because, from the narrative. Because and by the way, political ads are coming back to Google uh, as of uh, this week. But that's mm -hmm. risky, too, because there's, an, there's still an election going on. Right. A big election right. in Alabama. And it, it I'm sorry, Georgia. And it's really there's always an election going on. It, but it's really important <laughs> that the smaller candidates, the guy running for dog catcher doesn't have a big TV budget. These mm -hmm. are these ads are for many people the only way they can reach yep. their voters. So yeah. it's not. I was for this, uh, you know, and I got talked out of this on This Week in Google. Jeff Jarvis said, you're nuts. Because I said, all political ads should be banned on Facebook and Twitter. And he said, you can't do that. That disenfranchises the little guy. The big guy has but money to limit. buy TV. You can you can put a cap on it, cap on spending. Maybe. Say only a certain amount of money should can be spent. Like, I Maybe. mean, that's for, for both candidates across their entire. Like, you don't, you don't tell them how to spend it. You just say, hey, look, here's your cap. This is how much each candidate spends based on your district, based on... You know, how many constituents you have, how, you know, whatever that is. There's a calculation, I'm sure, that could yeah, be that made would, there. That would never fly, though. No, of I mean, course that's not. Just, of course not. It's a, it's I mean, a const is, violation of the Constitution, for one thing. Right. Leo, the, it's, what's interesting is that the, the state's complaint, they, they have all these problems with Facebook's power, except that one. Right. That's the one yeah. thing they don't mention is their, is their mass influence. And, and sort of, if you step back from all of this, What's happened with these giant tech giants is sort of consumerism, capitalism run to its logical extreme. That's right. You know, it's the same mm -hmm. thing with climate change. Yes. It's the same yes. thing yes. with the wealth inequity. Like it's like there are cracks appearing in the big Central American concept. And that's the mm -hmm. really scary thing. And I don't know that's what the, the answer is. Part. I I, that's to that me is exactly the scary right. part. Exactly right.
All right, let's take a little now that we've terrified ourselves. We need, uh, what were you talking before the show about on the local news? They have that, the thing at the end, the kicker that makes everybody oh, yeah, feel good. Kicker. You've the seen reindeer them. reindeer who skates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> David, your, your cat squirrel. knows how to roller skate, right? Because that's, we're going to need that at the end. We need that at the end of this show. <laughs> I'll work on it. <laughs> Can you get the roller skates out? Because uh, we, we need them. Uh, our show today. <laughs> so, <laughs> We, Do you need a moment, Leo? I need a yeah, moment. Cat on roller skates. I need that's the roller always, skating that's all, cat. That's the only thing that I, will oh. that will is a panacea for this. My wife has acquired a number, a large number of cat hats from Etsy, and has slowly been putting on a cat on the hat on the cat, and and then I have to run in because she's holding the cat down. I have to run and take a picture so she can post it on Instagram. <laughs> and somebody had a very, I think, a very good comment uh, on the last one. It, it was uh, uh, Samantha wearing an aviator's cat with her ears sticking out in, in the glass. And uh, they, the comment was simple. as two emoji. It was the poop emoji and the shoe emoji. And as anybody's ever owned cats, they know exactly what that means, mm -hmm. right? Uh, revenge. She, revenge. <laughs> she didn't poop in the shoes, but she did poop in the bathtub. So I figure oh, wow. that's a warning shot. That's a shot across the bow. Yeah, right. so don't ever put a hat on me again. Put on him. Will, Will, Wilmer won't put up with that, huh? You know, not a fan of clothing and hats. No, most cats aren't. Uh, my wife unfortunately follows uh, some Instagram which has a lot of cats in hats, and uh, and I think it's given her the notion that somehow you can convince cats to wear hats. Does this look like a happy cat? Does this look like a cat that's about... The cat looks deeply concerned. I agree with Jack. I, I, I feel times. this cat is about to poop in my bathtub. I don't know why. I just... Yeah, deep. this cat looks deeply concerned. That's the comment. Deeply concerned. Yeah, deeply concerned. Uh, are she... I do appreciate that it's just crocheted. It's not like oh, yeah. know, too fussy. It's like no, soft. It's not a fussy hat. <laughs> okay. Our show... I just, I, I look forward every morning when I get up to another gift. This Week uh, in Tech brought to you by Cat Hat. Cat Hats. Oh, man. If I could get the Cat Hat sponsorship, I would be gold. Big Cat Hat. Oh, my God. Cat Hats Incorporated. They're trying to, they're trying to break them up. The Big Cat Hat. Oh, just, the Big Cat Hat. It's too big hat. for its own good it's a right monopoly. now. You can't even get in. Can't even no. get in anymore. Our show today brought to you by Zendesk. Uh, I, you know, I think it's no question in my mind that a company does well when they say the most important thing is serving our customers. Customer service is everything. And you know that because if you've called your bank and been put in hold and, or, you know, if you, if you, if you called a Uber and it didn't show up, anytime you get bad customer service, you go, ugh, ugh. Sometimes it's a little hard. That's why the best Companies use Zendesk. Zendesk's award winning support, sales, and customer engagement software helps businesses offer personal service at scale. So your team can create conversational experiences that, bottom line, keep customers happy. It, you know, it's always going to happen. You're going to have a bad customer interaction, but Zendesk gives you the tools you need to make them better to communicate seamlessly across all channels. That's all we want as customers, right? Just communicate. Email, phone, chat, messenger, community forums, help centers, social media. Zendesk does it all. They call that a conversational experience. Connected, ongoing, and this is really important to natural customer interactions. All made possible with Zendesk's complete customer profile and unified set of tools that give you the context you need to deliver great service in every conversation. Most support software requires expensive consultants, months of setup, not with Zendesk. It'll take you a couple of hours to get up and running. Of course, it will grow with you as your company grows. You can, you can do all sorts of things. Zendesk software easily scales to meet whatever your needs are. The whole point is Zendesk gives your organization the flexibility to move quickly, focus on innovation, and adapt to growth. 150,000 paid customer accounts are proof that it works over a decade of experience. You know what? Zendesk is pretty good at customer support and service themselves. See for yourself why the best customer service experiences are built with Zendesk. Get started at Zendesk.com slash twit. That's Z-E-N 
D-E-S-K dot com slash twit. That's why when you think of, you know, great companies, you always think of the ones that had the best customer service, right? That's the one customers rep rem remember. When uh, Tony Shea passed away, uh, uh, Jason uh, Rapp, one of, one of my friends, posted a tweet how, about one, one year, I guess a few customers' shoes were delayed by Zappos by a day, and Tony sent them each a personal email, and he said... If you're on, we're going to get you those, we're going to FedEx them to you, you're going to get them tomorrow. I'm so sorry they didn't come on the day that you expected them. If you're still irate, please call our customer service reps and have them do something humiliating. Sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, put on a funny hat, do something humiliating. That's where that's what Tony Shea was brilliant at. Uh, great customer service. That's why people remember him, right? Zendesk, Z-E-N-D-E-S-K dot com slash... Twit. So wait uh, a minute. They they give you Leo. They give you five cents off every customer service call. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of our sponsors this week will give you a nickel off. So I love John Gruber's review of the uh, new Apple uh, headphones, the AirPods Max. He says, "Heavy is the head that wears the AirPods Max." <laughs> uh, have you tried them? Anybody tried them yet? Anybody got a got a pair? Of, you can't at this point. If you tried to buy them, uh, you'd be kind of out of luck because uh, I think the delivery date is well after Christmas now. I think it's it's sometime in February. They sold out very quickly, as as Apple Apple stuff often uh, does. So I think that you know the really the only question that matters with headphones is do they sound good? But we won't know How that. How good can good sound? Five hundred. Right? Yeah. Five, what is it? Five hundred fifty dollars. Good. How how good well, can that possibly sound? I just I don't I can't wrap my head around it. Well, the good ears, news well, they you wrap around your head. your head. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You put them on top yeah. of your head. Three hundred eighty-five okay. grams worth. What the early that? reviewers okay. say that they sound fantastic. Yeah. That the well, noise canceling yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. But not two hundred dollars more fantastic right. than the Sony MX3s or MX4s or the Bose yeah. Quiet Comforts or a bunch Bose of those. I love yeah. them. Like I love but, my Bose. But see, this is. This is an Apple move and it's, you know, look, it's people that love Apple that are the upper echelon of their customers, the frequent flyers, the business Super people, fan. the people with a lot of disposable income. And that's why income. I don't trust early but, reviews because those are the people who are going to say, because it's it's a confirmation bias. Well, I spent $550 on them. They must sound good. They're from Apple. They're beautiful. They must sound good. I don't trust look, that. I, and I'm and I'm sure they do sound good. I don't I'm not debating the sound. I'm sure they're great. I mean, Apple, you know, they when they come out with something, it does it usually lives up to the hype. Um, you know, the two hundred dollar price tag extra that you're paying on top of these things. Like I remember when I bought my Bose noise canceling headphones, this was ten years ago. Even that's going on a trip to Japan. Yeah. It was like you know, Japan. And I was like, I need, you know, these are so expensive. Like, oh my gosh. And they've been great. You know, 350 at the time seemed insane. 550, you divide that by a couple of plane flights when you start, you know, flying again and you're a frequent traveler and you're an iPhone person and you have AirPods, you know, it's, you're going the, th the 400, let's say. It's a buck you know, 43 extra... a gram. It's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. I, I would like but... to... <laughs> I, I like that you're, like you're weighing them out by gram and price, <laughs> like as if it's at the supermarket. That's a yeah. buck forty-three a, a gram. Scale there. Yeah, you're, you're like, like oh, scooping it out with like a gram. shovel. <laughs> like you're just like, all right, you want you want an extra? Okay, here you go. <laughs> okay David's got I, his hand I raised. Like, <laughs> I would like to formally object to everybody saying that the price of the Apple AirPods Max, which is what they're called, are five hundred and fifty dollars. These headphones incredibly do not have an input. There's no wire. You cannot yeah. plug this into a seat back on an airplane. You, yeah, you cannot. Oh, no, you could. Unless, but you, but unless it's not you included. buy Apple's adapter yeah. right. for $35. Right. So the price of the AirPods Max but, is correctly said to be 585 bucks. That's a good point. If you want to wear them on a yeah, plane. Yeah, but you're not, you're not plugging them in. You're using your iPad Pro uh, to watch a movie. You're not plugging these things yeah, into anything. Yeah, you're using anything. your beautiful you are, uh, brand new MacBook yeah, Air iPad, with M1 yes. chip. Well, that and yes. that was it. By the way, another complaint that Gruber had: these things have that thing Apple calls spatial audio, but it doesn't. There is no. It doesn't work with the Apple TV. Apparently, it only works. Oh my God. He says so. I have to watch this movie on my uh, iPad. He said it'd be fine if I were on airplanes oh, all the time, but I'm not on like airplanes. Like a plebe, he has to watch a movie uh, on his iPad. Oh, I want to watch oh, it on yeah. my TV. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, also, should we talk about the case. Yeah, we have to talk about that's that. exactly yeah. what oh, I was going to yeah, say. We 100% also, need to talk about that. It case. looks oh, like a brazier for your headphones. <laughs> what the headphone hell drop. is that? It's not. It's not and properly Marcus, a case. He puts it next to the Bose hard shell, know. which is a real case. These are just you have to expose the top of these things. Yes. Yeah, the case on. A, oh, where's the folding? Look, look. Apple, if anything, Apple has been known to have beautifully engineered things that are very clever. And it strikes me as absolutely bananas that these don't fold up as small as humanly possible and have a beautiful little case like that does something. I, like it, it blows my mind, actually. Yeah. And as Marcus well, Bradley pointed out in this video, third party the, accessories, cases. Yeah. This, this case protects the part that's made of steel and aluminum <laughs> it doesn't need protection. Exactly. It nylon leaves the mesh kit. part that yeah. needs protection unprotected. <laughs> I don't know I if just, it protects I, anything. I um, it, it is a uh, sm so-called smart case. It's magnetic, so the headphones power down. There is no on-off switch because it's an I Apple just product. I'm thinking about plumbers as I'm looking at this. <laughs> that does. Yeah. Uh, are you saying that's a plumber crack? Are you saying that? Uh, it looks... Uh, now I'm, I'm never going to unsee that. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I can, I'm unsettled. I can never unsee it. that now. You've You're done welcome. It. Yeah, thank you very much. But here's what's incredible, you guys. When the AirPods came out, everybody made fun of them, says that oh, looks I like know. dental floss. I know. You know, we're going to buy them anyway. Not me. doesn't no. matter how stupid it looks or how no. badly conceived. Uh, there's no way I'm buying this. It's got to come down in price. And it's got to fold up. I, I, I like at least... You know, it's like these fold flat. I love the the Bose folds flat, but man, I just got to fold up. I'm a not bit more. against. I'm going to travel with them. I mean, that's the. I'm thing. not against uh, spending a lot of money on headphones because headphones. You could spend a lot of money on headphones, get really great headphones, and they'll still be cheaper than an expensive stereo. So mm -hmm. I have, in fact, a very expensive pair of Hi-Fi Man headphones that I can listen to audiophile, high quality music. Um, and it costs more, frankly, but what you're not paying for audio quality on these. You're paying for an accelerometer and 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 microphones and a, and a Apple Watch style knob. And you, I don't know if you're paying for audio quality on this. I don't think that they're, you know, they're not using uh, planar magnetic or any of the fancy stuff. And it really bothers me that you know it's really a wireless pair of headsets. So that's by de definition not audiophile. Quality. I do love. I, I will say this. I, there is one feature about this that I think is really, uh, it's very Apple-esque. It's very clever. Um, and I would like to see it across every pair of wireless uh, battery-powered headsets. Uh, when I take them off, I just want them to shut off. Right. Like when I when I put them back on, I want them to turn right. on. Like that's this, what you're paying that, for is the circuitry. That seems this good. thing That has, seems very good. This thing has, what was it, a six-core processor in each cup? <laughs> well, remember when our minute. giant computers used to not have that like that's so weird to me i remember building a computer in college and like it was like a pentium 2 or something yeah. i was just like yeah. now i think about it i'm just like wow remember, yeah, you cool. could, like, yeah i remember out. i used to work at like office depot you could you'd sold that sell the chips that you could like pop out and put the new right. one in you, you know upgrade they just, the, chip. Yes. the newer you know, pentium this celeron oh if you pop gosh. it out you can get the next generation <laughs> pop it right in <laughs> And uh, you'll get some real improvement. Why can't I just buy an M1 from Apple and just switch it out? When I was a kid, we had one processor and we were happy. <laughs> What's my favorite thing about the it. AirPods Max? I can't wait till the next version when they tell us all the bad things about the first version. Yeah. You know, this first version didn't have this and oh, this and this. Just like, wait. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. Look at all these Max terrible things two. we did last time. Yeah. What were you going to say, David? Actually, I think the thing that you were talking about is a knock against it. I mean, yes, they, apparently you can just pull a cup away and say, what? Oh, yes, a, <laughs> what? a, a tonic. <laughs> but, but the no power thing is a, is a real problem because you can't shut the power off without putting it all the way into the case. Right. So if you just want to take a yeah, break, see, that's you have to a put huge it the, problem. otherwise it sits there on your tray table using up battery power. See, I hate that. It might like, be but I smart like the, enough I like to... the concept of like, if you take it off, I just want it to shut off. And then if you put them on, I want them to turn back on. I don't got the case thing is terrible, but yeah, I want, I want that in all headphones that I have that are battery powered, that are chargeable.
Yeah, I mean the music does that. The music pauses when you take it off and yeah, put right. it on. But the but the but headphones the themselves. That's, that's what I want. Again, I watched Marquez's video. He says you take them off, you put them on the table. They keep running for two hours. So I don't know. That's oh, true. that's not good. Well, yeah, but you get twenty. I mean, unless you're on a really long flight, you know. I mean, <laughs> well, there should be a way you could turn up the go to sleep. You know, turn down the go to sleep time. That would two be hours. Nice. They might they might be able to do that in a software that. update. Honestly, yeah, yeah. They, could, they, yeah, they might give that to you in a software like a, update. You know, it, it, when not in use, shut off after, and then you can yeah, set it the way minutes. you do your your screen on your iPhone. I I would say that what you are paying for is, you know, the H one chip in each ear with six cores, the eight microphones for noise cancellation, the three microphones for voice pickup, the accelerometer, the optical sensor in each cup, the the position sensor. The, this There's a lot of technology. A ton but Leo, do you argue that 11 microphones might be one or two <laughs> microphones too many? I don't I'm know. Just I don't know. I don't know. I have to trust Apple. They seem Does to think they need 11 Google microphones. Making headphones 11, 11, 11 microphones. <laughs> microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. They give them to you for free at that point because they're yeah. harvesting well, so much of your personal five, data. When you buy the first five, Rich, you get, you get, it's $100 per microphone and then you get the other six free. <laughs> uh, it's so Apple. We're, we're, so Apple. So Apple. So oh, Apple. Very Apple. Um, and you're going to see them everywhere. I mean. Are you? Yep. Yes. Yes, you yeah. are. Well, you can't get them, Leo. You said. You can't get them. They're Just sold out everywhere. We're buying yeah. them. Yeah. Johnny Ives probably going to wear them and his cool, like, fancy, what is it, a Bentley that he rides around? I don't know, whatever. I remember that. Actually, you better stop driving a Bentley because apparently Johnny Ive and Apple CFO Luca Maestri are in uh, the running to be the next CEO of Ferrari. <laughs> is that a plum job? I, I don't know. Uh, would you leave Apple as COO to, to take a job as CEO of Ferrari? I can see Johnny Ive doing it. He's got nothing to do, but I don't know. That's so weird. I mean, he really likes lug. I mean, he loves luxury cars, so yeah. that seems like a no, thing he would, he be, would be sensible. Interested yeah, he would in. make like, sense. It's not just taking a CEO yeah. job to take a CEO right. job. That's something you do when you get really rich. You start to love <laughs> luxury cars. I'll never understand <laughs> never what that's know. like. Never, we'll get never know. <laughs> you love two things. You love the AirPods Max and luxury and your vehicles. Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, luxury. yeah, yeah. And first, first class travel, <laughs> Ferraris. <laughs> this is from UX Collective, UXDesign.cc. Apple versus Google in ten honest graphics. One decision making. Google gives you lots of choices, then points to the one you want. Apple just says, "Nope, you're getting square." AirPod Maxes on your head, period. Uh, in research and development, uh, Google. I don't know what these. I don't know what these yeah, phallic symbols. I don't know what these phallic symbols mean. I don't know. There's X's. Oh, I think it's basically like they do. So Google tends to. They actually will launch stuff as opposed to like research, 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 and then uh, launch one thing. Google will launch a bunch of things and then use that as their, you know, they'll they'll just develop a bunch of products. They throw and a bunch of spaghetti reason. against the wall. Yep. Yep. And then they, mm -hmm. but Apple says, no, Those no, no. Those three X's are uh, messaging platforms right. that Google is Right made, there, sure. that's it. <laughs> Allo. Yeah. What's the other two? A Allo, hang, Hangouts. Yeah. Uh, me, let's Meet, see, we got, chat, we got Meet, oh, and Google Wave. Plus. Remember Google yeah. Wave, Wave Plus. Wave, Google yeah. Plus. I mean, there's just so many to so choose from. Apple puts all its wood behind one arrow or phallic symbol in this case. Google has many phallic symbols. Well, see, the Apple one looks like it's just a middle finger. Just <laughs> it does kind of. It's like a nice, <laughs> nice right. middle finger graphic yeah. there. V view of consistency. Apple is consistency focused on user experience. Google is consistency focused on visual consistency. Consistency for consistency's sake. I think that's this clearly now we know UX design is all about Apple. Products pre-announcement, Google press releases and teasers, Apple. Shh. I mean, they, that not should just really be a bucket leaking yeah. instead of a lock. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, not really I would that argue true. that Apple graphic is a not little... Not that true anymore. No, Apple, yeah, we, we kind of knew everything. Anymore. Yeah, we knew everything. Uh, well, in fact, Apple even announces stuff six months in advance now. Yeah. Yeah, which kind of disappointed me. I think that's a mistake in general to talk too much about what's coming Wait, how six so? months down the road. How so? Well, um, at WWDC, like they, they unveil all the new stuff that the new 
watch will have and the right. new, you know, the new. Kind of, I guess the argument have. is they got to get developers to work on it prior Before to releasing it. Hardware. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, though. I think it's a mistake. You know, they announced the uh, Mac Pro two years before it came out. I think that's perhaps a record. <laughs> and then what about the AirPad Universal Charger? They announced oh, that for whoops. Yeah. And it never oh, came out. Oops. Good old AirPad. Uh, they never did announce Apple Tags, did they? That's just rumored. But uh, it's, Yeah, continuing forever. rumor. Forever. Yeah, forever. A long time. Um, Apple is working on its own cellular modem. Uh, to replace the Qualcomm part. I'm sure Apple wants to get rid of everything it has to buy from Qualcomm or, or uh, Intel. Johnny Saruji says they've got in-house efforts. They, they said this in the in-house town hall meeting, but to your point, Ashley, it leaked out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, some luck. So, there you go. There Here's you something go. interesting, Leo. Did You know, everybody says that Apple is making their own chips now, right? Right. Doesn't that suggest to you that they make their own chips? That they have a fab plant? <laughs> no, but somewhere? they in fact do not make their own chips. TSMC makes them. It's all made in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's but Taiwan Semiconductor makes fifty percent of the world's chips for everybody. But they, but, all the brand names. But Apple scary. is designing them right, right. from you designed know designed in California. Designed yeah. in Korea. Made in Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, but no, that's a good point. They don't make their own chips, but they're but they're using their own chips. That's fair, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. You have you got an M1 yet, David? No, I haven't. I actually ordered it, the MacBook Pro one, and then I'm like, wait, two USB jacks yeah. down from the four I have yeah. now, and that's when Twitter schooled me and said, "Pogue, you idiot! The one that they're selling now is the equivalent of the low end. It's the low end model that they used it's to have. Not even Pro. If you wait till the spring, you'll right. get the M2." You're, on more the high end you're more Pro, patient than I am. More. Yeah. I actually yeah. got it. And I love it. And I love it. But what you do find out immediately is there are things that don't even run on a Rosetta. Mostly weird well, edge case things. Yeah, you have those programmer tools. That, yeah, a lot that of dev run. tools don't, you know, like homebrew and stuff. But I'm I still using a 2013 MacBook Pro Retina because it has, like, very specific plug. It has very specific ports that I need. Well, yeah. For video stuff, yeah. for all of my like transfer, like hard drives and everything, I'm just like, man, I just don't want to transfer everything to USB C. I just, I just carry a dongle with me everywhere, David. <sighs> but Leo, you've you've evolved, right? I listened to a twit where you you went on a rant about how overrated snappiness is. That who cares about? <gasps> I was not a rant. I think that's much too much to say. I was trying to make people feel better who don't have an M1 yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. To, no, merely to say that a lot of what you see, at least initially what you saw about M1, these geek bench and other kind of synthetic benchmarks, aren't really reflecting real world use. And it is true, it is snappier. But ultimately, do you care if it is one bounce or two bounces on the dock before an, uh, an app launches? I don't think that's a, a quality of life game changer. However, having had the M1 now for a little bit longer, it's pretty snappy. <laughs> <laughs> You've evolved. <laughs> it's snappy. I just, I don't want people to feel bad if their machine isn't snappy anymore. I mean, Ashley, you love your ancient Mac because. Oh, I didn't say I loved it. I said I have to use it. It ain't snappy. I have snappy. not upgraded it. It's, I have, I look, yeah, I, it's the farthest thing from snappy, but it's got an HDMI port or whatever it is that you need. Yeah. It has, like, can we just. Look at look at this. I mean, just look at all these ports, guys. You got HDMI on there. Yeah. You got your SD card. Yeah, but the kids the kids don't recognize those anymore. I I need yeah. all I need Mommy, these ports. What's that HDMI port for? So, <laughs> I have a different philosophy on that. You got all those built in. You're carrying them around. The additional weight, the additional bulk, the additional thickness, all the time. Even when you don't need those ports, I would prefer a slimmer simpler chassis and have a little dongle when I need them mm -hmm. and not have to carry around all that extra baggage. Uh, so this year in quarantine, like that's kind of what I've done. Yeah. I've, I'm actually, just, I'm working on a PC now. I just built a PC and um, I built, put together a, a nice 
little mini ITX case. You got an um, RTX then, 3080 in there. You got one of them. I wish it won't fit. I got. I have a. I have a NZXT Manta case, so it just it will not fit. Well, in you that should case. have bought a bigger case. How are you going to play Cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> I'm on that it on thing? PS5. Come on, Leo. I'm playing it on console. Um. Yeah. No. I. I just. Uh. I. Well, I built this a couple years ago. And so um, I haven't upgraded the video card in it. And now the cards are too big. So now I might just have to build an entire new computer. But I, I have been doing most of my video work on this. And then I have my iPad Pro with a with a pencil. And that's like the other, you know, screen that I kind of use around the house because it's just the lightest, easiest thing for me to take. You know where I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077? On my M1 Macintosh. And man, is it snappy. <laughs> No, it. Uh, I'm using Google Stadia to play it, and uh, in fact, a number of people, I've heard this is a good way to. A to number play of people it. said it actually plays better on Google yeah. Stadia than on your Xbox One or PS4. Uh, you're playing it on a PS5. You're not going to get 4K or any of that stuff. This game's been. Mm -hmm. They've been developing this game since yet 2012 iMac came out that you're using there. Or the MacBook came out. Um, it's fun. It's a fun game. Um. What'd you roll, Leo? I pegged you for a corpo. Did you roll corpo? I did. Aren't you funny? You pegged me. So you get to pick at the beginning if you're going to... Uh, you got I a nomad or a street kid? Right. Corpo's in a... But you learn very quickly when you're a corpo that you're not going to be a corpo for very long. No. You, there's a quick denouement and you're suddenly out in the street. So it didn't really, didn't really matter. It's Grand Theft Auto in a very big open universe in, a, in, the, GTA in the future. In the future. Yeah, it's a future GTA, basically. But it's fun. It's a nice game. Are you play? Have you it's, played it? Yeah, it's glitchy. It's it's <laughs> glitchy, glitchy and not snappy. Um, yeah, not not nope. There's some there's some interesting glitches. I know uh, my co-producer here in LA, Logan. He said there was a scene where you're supposed to get a chip put in your head or yeah. some chip yeah. put in someone else's head. Yeah. And uh, he, it, it was a gun. Like the, instead of, it was just. No, he, don't like, put so a gun in your like head. like I had a gun installed in my no. head, which was like very funny. Um, that made me laugh very hard. And then, uh, and then my husband's been playing it on his computer and uh, all of the palm trees keep popping to the foreground. All the trees keep popping to the foreground. It's very weird. Um, I've seen a couple other ones on Twitter where it's like a, a woman walks through a filing cabinet. Yeah, there's and all a lot the papers of weird glitches. I, there's that weird one about like the the, the people's junk, like showing. There's a clipping issue where there's a lot <laughs> the of uh, junk is showing through their. There's pants. a lot of junk in this, isn't there? There's a lot of junk. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that part yet. Um, I'm just in the tutorial here, uh, but I think Stadia. By the way, I'm playing this in a browser on a computer that's far, far away. Pretty amazing, right? Uh, it's a good proof of concept because uh, this is a, obviously a very challenging game. I'm not playing it on hardware. That's This is like the original Surface Studio. This is a pig of a machine. It doesn't matter because none of the work's being done on the machine. Nope. So Microsoft's launching their own Stadia rival X -Cloud. in the spring. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, and that was know, one, of the, one of the topics, how that, you know, because... That wasn't going to work on the iPhone, and now they're doing that via browser on the iPhone, which is, um, you know, I found that interesting because they have to kind of do that workaround because they wanted them to approve like every single game right. that Games. would be streamed yeah. through it. If Not it was just to prove it. I mean, that's, they wanted that's a insane. separate app for every game. <laughs> yeah, separate app for every game, and then each one of those had to be approved, yeah. which is just, just yeah. untenable. That's, oh, yeah. Not yeah. yeah. That's, that's how a cloud service works, a cloud gaming service. Yeah. 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 So the argument, which I think is a good argument, Microsoft decided not to make it, by the way. They didn't go the epic route and sue and everything. But the argument is, how is this different than Netflix? Uh, yeah. It's a streaming game. I'm streaming a movie. I'm streaming a game. There's no difference. But mm -hmm. but anyway, Apple's, yeah, there's a good end. Because around. it competes with Apple Arcade, Leo. That's the real reason, of course. <laughs> That's the reason. Yeah. Well, now, yeah, but Netflix, the they've got Apple TV that? Plus. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe Apple's Apple is in everything now. Yeah. Remember, remember when Apple, when they took their name, they said, "Oh, you know, Apple." We'll never do music. Was, like the, we'll never we'll do never music. Do don't music. worry, Beatles. We're gonna do music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Beatles. They have done everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I have a theory on streaming stuff. So, I think Stadia, Google Stadia, was waiting for Cyberpunk 2077. It was. It's just been. It's been around for a while. But I think this is going to be the big launch. And I think it's interesting that in some cases, it's actually a better experience than on your own hardware, like an Xbox One or PlayStation 4. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think it's for either Microsoft or Google. It has anything to do with gaming. Uh, I think a it's a proof of concept that you know that their cloud is amazing, but especially for Microsoft, I think what Microsoft's saying is, well, if you can run Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, what about Windows? What about Office? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I mean, if you can do a game in real time over the internet, could yeah. you could you do uh, could run you your do, entire business? Run your entire servers. business? Yeah, yeah. And I think a that's computer, the real 20 point. Twenty bucks a month yeah. for the, the screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, Microsoft I, I would love is that moving idea. in that direction, right? Yes, they call it you Windows know. VD. Yeah. Uh, which is what? a terrible name. That's, that's that seems a like a bad. bad. <laughs> well, we're going to inject you with Windows. We're going to infect you with it's, Windows it's, VD. It stands for Your Windows Virtual Desktop. Get it. But I think they probably will rename it once they realize what they've done. Um, It'll be Windows STD. STD, much better. <laughs> Simulated. Straight to desktop. Straight to desktop. Yeah. There it is. You got it. Perfect. <laughs> Windows STD. How, yeah. How are these virtual cloud-based console games even possible like anyone who's ever tried Isn't to that sing mind boggling yeah over zoom yeah like there's a latency issue you can't just wish that away it's amazing i like don't if i push a button on the, in the controller pro you, you program in the lag as a feature right so it's like you 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 just assume it's there maybe i mean with a game especially a game like this where you're shooting things you're dodging things I mean, that's where you put a, a, a chip in your ear and it turns out to be a, a cup of coffee. That's that's what latency will do for you. I'm not sure why, how they're getting around this. You magic. certainly have, have to have enough bandwidth. Yeah, magic of some kind. Um, that's actually a really good question, David. It's I, probably, I mean, the bandwidth is probably one aspect, but the latency of your connection, I think that's why mm -hmm. this whole 5G idea yeah. is so important because the latency is improved. And I think that's what does unlock a lot of these things in the future, mm -hmm. like the even, mm -hmm. you know, the Windows VD, whatever you're saying, you know, it's like the, the latency <laughs> is really almost more important at this point. Like people, people are sitting there, they email me, they're like, Rich, you know, my, my internet's buffering. I've got, you know, 200 down from Spectrum and it's buffering and I, know. You know, I can't watch Netflix. I'm like, you know, you realize Netflix needs like five megabits per yeah. second yeah, to work nothing. like yeah. perfectly. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. So, so what do you try some things? Yes. Let's, let's do something that's never been on Twit, twit before, okay? Okay. Um, I assume all of you have decent speeds. I'm, I'm paying for 200 megabits yes. down in, in my house, okay? Yes. So if you could cut to the broad view of all four screens okay. or all three screens in the okay. Leo, I'm going to say one, two, three, clap at okay. that speed. Everyone clap on one, two, three, clap. Ready? One, two, three, clap. <laughs> yeah, there's no way online games can work. <laughs> they do, David. Wait a minute. No, do that. Wait a minute. We got to do that again. That was awful. Let's all sing really happy bad. birthday. No, one, two, two three, one, clap. One, two, three, clap. <laughs> Wait, I, that was really off. We had two cues there. Yeah, we had two cues. Rich and I live and die by the cues. So guys. now first you yes. got Windows VD and now we got the clap. I don't know what's well, going David, on on this know, show. You do, David, I mean, you know live TV. I mean, it's it's a nightmare, the delay. So, yes. you know, I do these station talkbacks and you, yeah, Ashley, you've done them. Leo, oh, you've yeah. done them. But it's like, you know, what I'm hearing in my ear is oh, like terrible. three seconds quicker than what you see on TV. Oh, I mean, it's, it's such a nightmare to like... Yeah try to, you know, and when you see it on TV and I'm sitting there like, I'm bobbing my head for like three yeah. seconds. People are like, what? What's it? Why isn't this guy talking yet? Like, I've heard what well, you said and I started talking as soon as you stopped. The one gift yeah. that time. COVID has given us, which is we all understand a little bit better that because everybody's got lag and you, if you watch any news at all, because uh, everybody's coming from their house now, it's just yeah. like you're getting, we all kind of used to the Zoom effect. I think that is yeah. one one thing we're going to come out of uh, the quarantine with some information about. So, which did you choose, Street Kid? You looked like a Street Kid, Ashley. Oh come on, Leo! I went Corpo. Give me a. Break. You did too. <laughs> I totally did. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah. So, Street Kid Nomad. I don't know. I'm going to start a new game because I'm bored. Now hey, you better watch out. This is going to get this. Hour. This could get graphic very quickly. No, there's no nudity in I, this. I actually have a. Uh, I've got the Stadia. They sent it to me, you know, for free from the. Uh, I was, you know, for, I don't for what was it like YouTube Premiere or whatever I have my YouTube subscription. Mm -hmm. They said, "Oh, do you want a Stadia?" And I ordered it, but I've never played it. But now that you're talking up this game, I oh might yeah, need to well you have to buy the game you for sixty try it bucks. For sure. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. That's yeah. that's how they get you. Yeah, I was talking but to my brother. Right I was like, now... "Is this free to play on Stadia?" He's like, "No." Yeah. 
yeah. if you but if you don't have Stadia, I believe right now, if you if you buy Cyberpunk through it, they will they there's an you. offer yeah. where they send you a Stadia, yeah, which that's is what I great. Did. Well, I had, did that to me. When, so now I'm going to have two Stadias. I'm sure. going to have to open up an eBay account. When Stadia and was Stadia. announced, I bought <laughs> the Stadia Pro Kit and then I canceled it. I thought, I don't want that. This was a, almost, it seems like a year ago. I don't want that. But then the Cyberpunk thing. So I said, all right, all right, I'm going to buy the game. They send you the controller and a Chromecast Ultra because the new Google Google TV thing doesn't I know. work with doesn't Stadia. Work. I'm mm -hmm. so ridiculous. So I was going to actually ask about that. So is my, I haven't opened the box yet. Is the Chromecast in the box as yeah, well with Chromecast the controller? Ultra. Yeah. And I can't use my Chromecast TV, which is so no. ridiculous. And in fact, you can't use any other controller with it either. You have to have that one to punch. Uh, <sighs> and then you can play it, but you can play it on a big screen TV. It actually looks really yeah. great. Yeah. Um, you can play it and on anything. And if you can't anything. get your hands on a PS5 right now or an Xbox Series X for the holidays, like this is a good way to experience it. Because as Leo mentioned, if you're playing on a standard PS4 or an Xbox One, it's going to look like you have everything on the lowest settings. It just looks not great. And it plays not great either. So, and even, you know, even a PS4 Pro is like going to, there's some struggle there. Honestly, <laughs> and I don't, I don't think this was planned, but this is the best case scenario for Stadia. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is going to put Stadia on the map, and it's actually that's good news for Microsoft because they're xCloud. NVIDIA has uh, GeForce Now. They've been doing this for a while. Sony bought Gaikai, so they could, they've been doing this streaming gaming. Everybody's doing streaming gaming now. And uh, it's, it's, we're in this weird period. I even thought this when Apple came out with its new Macintosh computers based on its own silicon. We're in this period where owning your own hardware is rapidly becoming like owning your own CDs or books. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's a liability. It's a, it's, you're going to move to streaming. Yeah. To physical. Physical, uh, to physical is product dead. is dead. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in this I weird remember, I mean, interregnum. I remember buying, you would you would want to have a collection of things. And I've, I talked about this on my mm -hmm. podcast. It's like, you, I, it used to be building a collection of something was amazing. You know, whether it was books or CDs or movies or Blu-rays. And as, you know, everything, it, it's to me, I don't even want anything anymore. Like, I, why would I not just pay the $10 a month? And I know, I get it. Not everyone wants to do that, but it just seems so much easier. Like, I, you know, if I want to listen to the new Taylor Swift thing that I see everyone tweeting about, I can just do that in a second. Um, yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't have to deal with all the, I know, Leo, I, I see you, you, I, I bet you've got the server of your movies, right? Yeah, Plex, yeah. I yeah, do. see, I know. I, but I don't want to do I, that. I, it's like that's an archive. I don't even right? want to like do you're that. You're now not collecting even anything. That's you're, old school. you're an archivist. You're, yeah. you're, it's archival. Yeah, even that and is I, old I school. I always love that idea of just, you know, having all this stuff, you know, like I own this, like, but then I'm like, ah, I don't want any of it. Like, and you can't especially take it you. when you move, man, you pack up those CDs or those books. <laughs> you don't, that's a nightmare, right? You know what else is a nightmare related what? to this topic? I've got a blended family of five children. There is nothing you can give these kids for Christmas because there's no physical I things. Know. Anymore. You uh -huh. know, I'm experiencing that for the first time so too. It's like, I'm going to give them a gift card, a steam exactly. card. What a, I'll pay for three months of Netflix for you. Yeah. So what you end up giving them like is socks and no too. one wants socks. <laughs> No yeah, one is happy I, getting socks. That's how I feel with my family. It's like, I'm like, uh, what do you want for Christmas? But it's like, really, the thing is, is like, everybody wants like an Amazon gift card or a Visa gift card. It's right. like, I'm just like, okay, well, I guess I'll just send that to you. It's depressing. Like, I got to say the one thing that Apple did right this year, and I think it's kind of a slower burn, but that little HomePod mini is like the perfect it's gift bucks. because it's, <gasps> yeah. it's a hundred bucks. Thank you. If they have an iPhone, Thank you. it's like clearly, I will you know, give that to everybody. It's a so, great you know gift. How, how about Apple this? Sent me, how about Apple sent me two to try out as a stereo How pair. do they sound? It's really cool. They do sound They're great. They're nice. Yeah. I, total. I, opposite sides of the room. Sounds good. Really great. I bought yeah. one for my sister. That The second they sent me the review unit, I, I couldn't like really tell anyone, but I literally ordered one this the next day that I could, you know, the first day I could. And I said, you have to get this. Like, you need this in your house. And I bought it. By the way, she just got it today. And I ordered it the first day it was available. So, Ooh. I guess they are selling those too. It's the worst feeling in the world. My son, ever, since he was 16, I've been giving him like socks. And every <laughs> single time 
He opens the what present. What is wrong with you, man? <laughs> what kind of present are you? It's so socks sad. Socks are a great present. And, uh, no, they are. Yeah, socks. But it's I, a good sock. Every I time. A pair of socks. He's got his face. Is, he's all excited. He's opening his present. And he goes, oh. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> By the way, Stadia running. I mean, uh, yeah, Cyberpunk 2770 on Stadia running on a Galaxy Fold. How about mm. that? Did and Samsung it, have to approve that? No, I don't think so. It's the Stadia oh, app. Yeah. So, and you can even use the screen as a touch controls, although I don't know if that's the ideal way to do it. Um, I have one of those weird things where you attach the phone and you got a joystick underneath it and you're walking. Oh, I have that for my Switch. It's so weird. I have that for my Nintendo Switch. It's called a Fixture S1. S1. No, it's. I think it, they just did a liquid uh, injected mold Oh, that's uh, cool. Version. I should get and that. And they're they're I'm really great. my my thumbs are starting to cramp up. There, it's you put the um the main part of your uh, switch inside it, yeah. and then it folds up. Yeah. And then you put your pro controller yeah. locks into the bottom half, and um and then that way you have like an actual like controller. Did you instead buy of Joy -Cons. your uh, Did you buy your turnips today yet, or? I have not. Uh, I have not checked it's in with. I, I didn't check in with Daisy May. <laughs> I haven't checked in with Daisy May. I, um, but I did. I did go and uh, I. I built some nice. holiday things. Did built you? Some nice holiday did you? Things. I don't know if this was just me. I think it was. But wow! Did you see the shooting stars a couple of nights ago? Probably just you. On it's it just random me. for everybody. It's in random real life. Everybody. No, no. In uh, real life, you're there tonight. Actually, it's the Gemini. It's I was going to say, aren't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the real life there is going to happen tonight. But in in Animal Crossing, it's a, but it's the same date for you, but it's a different date for everybody because yeah, you can like time travel for people. But there were like three a second for a, like a long time. I got so many star shards. I can't wait to figure out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you gotta go talk to Celeste. You gotta talk to yeah, Blathers. Celeste. You meet Celeste. Celeste. Gotta get your DIYs from Celeste. And get your get your yeah. All right. This could really go downhill. We'll fast. take it offline after. We'll talk yeah. about Animal Crossing yeah. after. My mom got Animal Crossing. I talked her into getting it. Like she was hesitant, and she it's... got a Switch and Animal Crossing in October. Me too. Me too. Oh. She has spent hundreds of yes. hours in game. Yes. Oh, and yeah. she just built a forced perspective village what? with dollhouses. My mom oh, is that's... better at Animal Crossing than I am. That's it's the, very all the rage. Yeah, because you can very buy upsetting. dollhouses. You can you buy as many as you want. And you built. <laughs> Wait, my mom's better game? at Animal Crossing than me. The game Seriously. is actually the best COVID game it because is. it's a nice world where nothing bad is happening. There's an ocean, there's a moon, there's sunshine, the waves, the sand, the beach. You can build a nice place. You got little animal friends that come by and visit. Uh, do you do this though? Because every once in a while they'll come up and they'll say, I'm sick of my catchphrase. You want to give me a new catchphrase? Do you give them evil catchphrases? I don't, because they're so nice. Oh, they're I so give nice. them the worst catchphrases. <laughs> oh, I've seen wow. some really funny Leo, we stuff. are learning a lot about you. <laughs> yeah. You took a friendly game and you turned it... Mm, Twisted okay. it into something. <laughs> oh, but then every time you see them, they say it. It's so funny. <laughs> All right, let's... Uh, we should do a thing, the top 10 best COVID games. We've got two already, Cyberpunk. Anything with a world that you can go into and immerse yourself in. I think Animal mm -hmm. Crossing is perfect. It makes We're me feel It's like the Great Us British bake sh Baking Show. Oh, of Among Us. British yeah, Baking Show. Great. Yeah. What did you say, Among David? Us you, I said Among in this Us? household, Among Us. Yeah. Is the That's the one right now. That's the Every big night. one. And do you play that with the kids? I do, yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's just, it, you, uh, the hours go by. So in Among Us, and I think people know by now, but I'll just say for those of you who do not, you are... On a space, it's really werewolf. You're on a spaceship. Uh, you have to keep the spaceship running. You have tasks to fix things, and you're with a team. There's other people there, the people, your friends and family, the real people, and some of them though are imposters, and their goal is to kill you one by one, and you have to figure out who those people are and out them before they kill off the crew. I bet it's a lot of fun. Out, you got to figure out who's sus, and you got to toss them out the airlock. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super fun because. You know, then then you have these meetings where you say, "Okay, I think it was Leo," and Leo right. has to try to convince you that right. he's not just the like assassin. werewolf. It's basically yeah. Werewolf. It is. How does that game yeah. make or money? Assassin is that, in real I, life? My kids yeah. haven't hit me up for in-app purchases on that one yet. <laughs> is there? Are there? I don't think there are. 
I think it's just paid on console, but it's free on um, on mobile. Yeah, you can play it on uh, iOS. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Hm. Fall Guy is also very fun. Fall That's Guy? Fun. Roblox? Fall guys. Uh, Jason, oh, Jason in the chat room saying Roblox is a good one. Oh, I banned Roblox in my house. Did you? It's... Yeah, I, it's isn't it's that not good, good for kids because they're learning to no. build things? No, 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 no. It's it's like it sounds like Minecraft, but it's not. The games are not. Um, no, that I'm not like a big fan a, of Roblox. A chiffon butter ad. It sounds like Roblox, but it's not. Yeah. It's chiffon. <laughs> I can't believe it's not Minecraft. I can't believe it's not Minecraft. I can't believe it's, that's, yeah, that's basically it. It's like, it looks like, it's like, oh, it's blocky. It looks like they're building something. No, there's no? literally like a murderous grandma chasing after your kids with a bludgeon, no, you know, that's trying why to bludgeon kids love them to that. death. That's why kids yes. love that. Yeah. That's why they love but it. But you're making yeah. a list of the best, co uh, the best COVID, COVID pandemic games. games. Yeah. Doesn't Jackbox three dimensions? That's fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun. That's the yeah, trivia. You don't know, Jack, uh, but it's no, oh no, my God! There's like forty of them now, and there's a bunch it of lets games. You, the beauty yeah. is that you can play against other people in their other homes. Yeah, together. It's We've not done like that. Among us, we, we did that. Together. We did. We do an after hours every once in a while. We did a few of those. Yeah, that's it. Was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, We're doing Among Us for my brother's birthday. See, I think this, that's really sweet. Weekend. That yeah. solves a problem. It's the only way we can all be together. You're so you're not in the same room, I'm but you can be together. Murdering each other. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only way. There's, there's. Honestly, I love Werewolf so much that I would go places to and encourage people to play Werewolf. That you had to play in person because you you know there's sounds and stuff, and I just love it. So I think I should play, probably play Among Us. That sounds sneaky like sneaky Sasquatch is also another See, uh, sneaky top. Sasquatch Apple that's Award a, that's winner. That's a big COVID game. Yeah, that was yeah. like a breakout kind of yeah. Apple Arcade. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this has been a lot of fun. Let's take a little break. We, I love this panel. David Pogue is back with us. It's been about four years since you visited, 400 episodes ago. His new book is coming out in January. Can you pre-order it on Amazon now? You can. And in fact, as all your authors probably tell you, that helps the author a lot because all the sales leading up to the release date count for the bestseller lists as a single week. So, so you would suddenly jump to number one. Suddenly, boom. And I'll tell you what else. This is something I, I offered on Twitter. If you if you want, if you're looking for a gift for someone who cares about the environment or just being safe, yeah. send me the receipt to pogue at me.com, my email, pogue at me.com, and I will mail you an autographed book plate, a sticker oh. that you can put in when it comes. Oh, and wow. so that way you have something to wrap and put under the tree. You don't have to wait till January for that. Now, see, here's an example. That is, that's brilliant. I can order this on Kindle, but then where would I put the book plate? So, <laughs> On your forehead. On my forehead. Just so I'm going to get the, the paper back, back, the back even though it's twice as much as the Kindle. Oh, but you got, did you read the audio uh, book version? I Audible? am. I'm doing it right now. This is day six. We read 1 to 5 p.m. every day, me and an engineer on speakerphone. We're halfway through. Wow. It is the hardest, most exhausting That's so hard. It's reading so hard. It. I would have done your audio books. Just call me. You do four hours. <laughs> you do four. Uh, is that something you I do, can Ashley? Talk for four, I can talk for five hours a day for Easy. three weeks. No Easy. problem. Easy. Really? Easy. And how comfortable are the AirPods Max that entire time? Do they fit pretty nicely <laughs> while you? Yeah, 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 yeah. My head is like this. He's like, help me. I think One I would volunteer. I would volunteer too. That would be fun. I'm going to do audiobooks when I retire. I think. But do you say it's horrible? It's it's terrible work. It's it's shockingly it's grueling. Depleted. It's yeah. tough. I mean, it's literally, tough. other than you, Leo, when in life does anyone speak performatively nonstop right. for four hours or eight hours? Like it's actors and it's you. It's but as if I was. Else. It's as if I was made for this. It is. <laughs> You'd be a good audiobook. But narrator, I've done a couple of audiobooks. I did one when, when we visited Audible. They had me do some weird little red riding hood <laughs> takeoff. It's a little golden riding hood. It's still on Amazon. Uh, Audible, I think what? you can get it for free. Yeah, it was weird. What? Leo, if, that you is could, weird. if you could narrate any audiobook, like your favorite book, what would it be? I like doing books with lots of characters so I can do a lot of voices. So it would have to be something. Like Cryptonomicon. Oh, you're you're going to get into it. Or, yeah, I'm going to get into it. Game of Thrones. Yeah, like a snow crash. You're snow like crash. You're like oh. the hero protagonist. Yeah, but all of those be... have been done. Oh, so maybe man. the next maybe the next Neil Stevenson novel or something you like that. You should have done it. It's like, yeah, you should have gotten in on that 70s oh, action. On that. Love that. 
I think, though, that you're right. Because the other thing I did was Cory Doctorow once asked me to read a short story uh, for... Uh, he did a uh, release of short stories that had a little chip on it that had everybody, that famous people reading his book, semi-famous in my case, or less than famous, infamous would probably be the right word, reading his uh, book. And uh, that was hard because I was doing it on my own. With the, does the, and what I experienced at the Audible thing is the producers constantly, at least for me, saying, slow down, mm -hmm. slow down, slow down. Mine constantly interrupts me to say, did you mean to say that? And I'll say, <laughs> say what? Say what? And they said, you just said the sea's temperature has gone eight Des Moines since 1950. <laughs> I said that? Really? Brain like, wait, what? What? The funny thing is that he asked you, did you mean to say that? <laughs> like you might have. No, I meant Des Moines. No, that's exactly yeah. what I meant. It's a measurement. I'm it's, a, it's, a, it's the yeah. uh, There's 15 Des Moines per degree. <laughs> I just bought your book, David, while we were talking. Oh, I have, Leo, I have thank placed you. An I'll order. sign the sticker and mail it to you. Well, like I said, it'll fit right in on my bookshelf with the uninhabitable earth, the eighth extinction, and now David Pogue, what to do, how to prepare for climate change. Uh, available on Amazon. Look, it's got pictures. Does oh, it have, so many pictures. What are the so pictures of? Sea level coming up? Dinosaurs roaming yeah. the earth? What are they pictures of? <laughs> Oh my um, God. That's you know, full of facts of and figures. Like, it's semi wait. semi survival stuff, like how to make it through a wildfire and how to make it oh, through. Oh, jeez, Louise, so, that's going to be a great book. You got a bestseller. That's awesome. Well, thank you. I'm very, From your mouth to God's ear. No, I'm very excited for you. Brilliant. You should just thank pick you. natural disasters and become the you know the guy who writes about natural disasters. <laughs> yeah, you that could would work. Just do a whole bunch of those. Yeah. Um, also with us, it's great to have him. From KTLA, the Los Angeles TV station, but now you'll see them all over the country on uh, on Newsmax. What is it? Newsmax stations everywhere. Oh, no, Next Star. Next Star. Newsmax is totally oh, different. It's thing. Uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Newsmax everywhere. No, no Next Star. Oh. Okay, Rich on Tech TV, and uh, Rich has a book too uh, about the iPhone. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of out of date uh, now, huh? Yeah, you know. I didn't, I didn't do the new one for David, iOS 14. David learned that. You you know, the problem is every year you got to write another book. <laughs> yeah, my books next book will be a little bit of milk. Ne nothing. It's terrible. I yeah. want I want yeah, more evergreen true. next time. Yeah. <laughs> a little longer runway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, Ashley Esketha. Do you do uh, voiceovers? Do you read books? Can I get some I have, of? I have done voiceover. Nice. I want um, to hear you read a book. You I have not done an audio book, but oh. I would do it if anyone out there is looking for someone to read their audio book and doesn't want to do it themselves. Call, call me. Let's Good. I can do um, Hagrid. I can do Dobby. I can do <laughs> Harry Potter. I can. Wow. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I, Let's hear your golem. Oh, um, nice, precious. Nice. I can do golem. I would That's do golem for you. Dude, you know, you it's not, feature. it's terrible pay, by the way. It's five, yeah. I think 5,000 is the going rate per book. So how many, how long is it going to take you to read your book? Uh, I'm getting 5,000. Yeah. And it has been six days, four hours a day, and I'm at the halfway point. So it's going to so be 12 20, days of work. Yeah. Wait, every book is five grand no That's matter the, what? Well, Even, some famous people, you might get more rich. Yeah, like a Jim Dale gets no, more. Jim Dale gets well, a not, lot more, no. I'm sure. I actually did do an audiobook with my friend. He wrote a book um and I was in the final chapter which got cut from the book, but then I was in I was, I did the audiobook portion of yeah. it. So I did sit there with him and you know It feels like it would be the, fun. Anyway. But then it's kind of like it's a long slog. It, yeah. It's work. Yeah. It's, it's work. just it's work. It is. It's it is work. It is not and it's it's not easy. Yeah. You know, doing voiceover it's, and and I am t I too am a person who is uh often told during voiceover to slow down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to read. Which just makes your hours longer. It's annoying. Right? So you you got to read every word. It. I just hate that. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. sitting there and you're speaking, and yet at the end, you're completely depleted. Like you've yeah. run a marathon. It's it exhausting. makes no sense. Yeah. It really is exhausting. Yeah. Uh, our show today brought to you. Actually, before we do that, let's do. Uh, do we have a, a, a highlight reel? We put together a little mini movie showing you what you missed. If you missed even one little thing this week on Twit. 
Oh, in this a is gonna be fun. I, you know, I was looking for the rat hole music, and I think it's it is on <laughs> it is somewhere. It's Who's it. opening the rat hole? <laughs> That's Merlin Man. Previously on Twit, Tech News Weekly. 46 states plus D.C. and Guam, as well as the Federal Trade Commission yesterday, both filed separate but twin lawsuits against Facebook. And they're basically saying that Facebook for years has engaged in a pattern of anti-competitive conduct to elbow out competitors, to buy up potential rivals. Hands on tech. I was able to get in touch with the folks at Van Moof. You would never know this was an e-bike. All of the cabling is run through the tubing, even to your brake cables. All about Android. Back in 2018, Google announced that they would be shutting down uh, Inbox by Gmail. And I was very, very upset. And I said, you know, is there even a good graveyard for Google stuff? You know, what if we made killed by Google.com? Love that Mac site. Break Weekly. Love it. Long rumored AirPods Max came out. The bottom line, $549. That's yeah. a lot of money. There's two H1 Apple Silicon 10 core audio processors. Nobody who buys headphones is using each the Anchor cup. Thing. But that's each cup has its own 10 core processor. Uh, its own 10 core system and package, <laughs> like an iPhone, like an Apple. <laughs> Twit. <laughs> Every show full of rat holes. 10 core. I got it wrong. I thought it was six cores. I thought I was overstating it. 10 core. Crazy. Crazy. Our show today brought to you by Mint Mobile. You've seen the ads. Ryan uh, Reynolds, right? Yes. Deadpool does the ads for Mint Mobile. It's the first company to sell premium wireless service online only. Mint Mobile lets you safely order from home, maximize your savings with plans starting as low as $15 a month. That's, that's $15 a month, including unlimited nationwide talk and text. I love my Mint Mobile. In fact, I have an iPhone SE with Mint Mobile in it. That's kind of my backup phone. It's fantastic. I've been using it for a year. I I went for, this is before they had the unlimited plan, I went for the 12 gigabyte a month plan. So I paid a, a year ahead, 300 bucks. Unlimited nationwide talk, text, 12 gigabytes a month, $25 a month. That's less than a third what I'm paying T-Mobile for the same thing. And incidentally... It's on the T-Mobile network. Now, this is the best offer they've ever had. For a limited time, when you buy any three-month plan, you'll get three months additional for free. They're basically cutting it in half. By going online only, eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. It makes me wonder why I was paying more for these <laughs> big-name companies when I can get it for so much less. Every plan comes with unlimited talk and text, high-speed data on the nation's largest 5G network. You can bring your own phone. They make it easy. They don't even charge you. They'll send you the SIM, no cost. That way you keep your same uh, phone, the same phone numbers. You can even port the number over, so you keep your phone number if you want. They also sell phones. I got my iPhone SE from them. That was a good deal, too. 30 bucks a month, I got a phone and the best cellular service. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered. Seven-day money-back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile. Get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. Why are you paying more? There's a limited time offer. Buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan. Get three more months free. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash twit. It's minty fresh. It's delicious. And it's kind of Kind of cute, the little green fox in the glasses. Mint Mobile, M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash twit. Thank you so much, Mint Mobile, for supporting This Week in Tech. And I thank you for supporting us by using that special uh, URL so you get the special offer. You'll get a benefit, and so will we. They'll say, oh, you must have heard it with Leo. Mintmobile.com slash twit. Thank you, Mint Mobile. Uh, did anything else happen this week? Let me check. I always, <laughs> always forget. There was the new headphones. Uh, there was the lawsuit against Facebook. Um, Stadia we talked about. Did you? any of you ever get the Halo band? Did you get that, Rich? The Amazon Halo band? I did band? not. No. Mm -mm. I have one. Nope. Um, 
There's a couple and of things. Can you naked in front of it? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So first of all, it, it's not a watch. There's no face. It's just a Velcro band with a thing, a bump that's measuring the normal heart rate steps and stuff. But if you press a button, it also listens to everything you say and then gives you a report card at the end of the day. It says, you were a little nasty when you talked to uh, Ashley. You should probably <laughs> apologize to her, that kind of thing. Uh, and then you're supposed to pose naked in front. You can wear underpants, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just like in cyberpunk. Just like in cyberpunk. Yeah. But they might. You might be able to see your junk. But yeah, still. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> wear wear baggy shorts. Yeah, you pose in front of it. Same, Senator Amy Klobuchar wrote a letter to the Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, saying, "What is your agency doing to make sure that all this information that's going to Amazon is protected?" She says it's even more intrusive than many of these other products. I'd already been concerned. She says this one takes it to the nth degree. Now, Amazon says your voice recordings don't ever leave the watch. Actually, they, I'm sorry. They don't ever go to Amazon. They leave the watch. They go to your phone. They're analyzing your phone by the app and sent back to the watch. But your pictures go to the Amazon cloud because they're analyzed and then destroyed. But then you have to keep taking pictures because they're looking at your body fat. And I don't know. I didn't even really want to. I decided <laughs> I didn't really even want to. I, uh, I don't want to look Buy at Buy a tape measure. Yeah. I just like, well, yeah. I, you know, I don't know, man. That just seems, that yeah. seems like, that just seems like excess for no reason. Although I would love to know how many times I say the F word in a day. It doesn't say stuff like that. It just says, you know, between 10 and 10, 20 a.m., you were, you were sounded intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should were you listening you. to David Pogue's new book? Yeah. 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 You, you sounded, sounded depressed. depressed. You sounded depressed. You I were also you, listening then you saw to that David kicker at the end and book. you looked happy. I heard you crying. And then you read the hope chapter. Yeah. And you felt, yeah, I felt and I better. could tell you were hopeful. Oh, it seems to have That's somehow right. it's forgotten all the information. But yeah, it would say, uh, of course, I'm doing podcasts a lot of times. So it would say, you sounded interested or bored <laughs> or. But I rarely sounded angry. But if you now uh, we have a listener, uh, uh, Doctor Mom, who says uh, she wears it while she's out walking, and because she's wearing a mask, she's always yelling uh, at people. <laughs> and it's just like you are furious. You, are you need anger management. Terrible engagement. person. We yes. are reporting you. Yeah. Yeah. And the Wall Street Journal's review, Jeffrey Fowler and Heather, I forgot her last name. They reviewed it together, and she suggested that its adjectives for how she talks as a woman, oh. or more dismissive and oh. belittling of a woman. Heather Kelly. Like, oh. Yeah, Heather Kelly, yeah. So it yeah. would say you sound is overbearing. Is this thing going to tell me I sound shrill? Because if shrill. it is, it's getting launched yes, into that's the it. sun. That's right. Overbearing, it called her, yeah. Oh. Ugh. It described Jeffrey's tone with words like opinionated, while it was more likely to flag the tone of Heather, a mom of two, as dismissive and even condescending. I'm going to fight a wearable like i'm this <laughs> it makes me want to punch it into the sky I'm ashley mad. you sound combative right now exactly. <laughs> and I dismissive sound bossy and bossy <laughs> yeah we we have spouses that can tell us we sound combative yeah, yeah. well that's actually oh, why i, I wanted I know. it my, like, my husband will never say that to me <laughs> no he knows better but that's why i wanted it because lisa says sometimes you sound a little mean to me and so I said, well, let's see what the halo says, okay? Uh, yeah, let's, let's You're go so to the halo. You're so smart. Go to the halo. That's what it is. Yeah, go to the I halo. I have an app yeah, right here that. that says I am not being dismissive. I'm <laughs> being opinionated. All last the week, I was so nice to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did not work. Um, this, is a, this is a perfect example of what Tim, Tim uh, Gebru was talking about at Google, where the, the training set that you use on these AI very much influences what the AI says. It's, mm. it's imperfect. And if you train it on male voices and then you have a female voice and it's not going to do as good a job. She did her initial uh, work, not before she came to Google, um, uh, on uh, how face recognition technologies did a very poor job with women and people of color. Mm -hmm. uh, very famous. Uh, Google hired her to be an ethicist in their AR. Uh, she actually ran the, the AI ethics research at Google until she wrote a paper 
that maybe was a little critical of the way Google was doing things. They withheld the paper. She wrote an email saying, I, I'm going to quit unless you tell me uh, who said this was a bad paper. You hired me to tell the truth, not to whitewash what's going on. Rather than respond to her email, Google fired her immediately. Uh, now, of course, uh, Google's CEO, Sundar Pichai, actually Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai, apologized and said, well, I'm going to look into this. The paper was called On the Dangers of Stochastic Parrots. Can language models be too big? And it, it lays out the risks of large language models. AIs trained on, according to the MIT um, Technology Review, which actually saw the paper. They didn't publish the paper, but they summarized it. Uh, AI models trained on staggering amounts of text data have gone increasingly popular, increasingly large. The paper talks about uh, the energy consumption, <laughs> and which Google said, well, that's old data. We don't do that anymore. We're, haven't you heard? We're carbon neutral. Uh, don't listen to that, David Pogue. Climate change isn't real. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the costs uh, and, of course, the problem, inscrutable models. An AI model taught to view racist language as normal is obviously bad. The researchers, though, point out a couple of more subtle problems. One is that shifts in language play an important role in social change. The Me Too and Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter movements, for example, have tried to establish a new anti-sexist, anti-racist vocabulary. An AI model trained on vast swaths of the Internet won't be attuned to the nuances of this vocabulary and won't mm -hmm. produce or interpret language in line with these new cultural norms. There's all sort. You can see there's all sorts of issues. We as humans are very subtle. Yeah. Uh, and, and our understanding of gestures, handwriting, speech, computers are not subtle. No. But when you have humans programming that training set, it it helps. But also when you have those... Their like, biases can be... They talk about, right, their biases yeah. come into play. And also their blind spots come into play. And I think that that's actually even a bigger issue is it's not so much people programming AI to purposefully end up, you know, we've seen these examples of, you know, like, oh, Microsoft, like, put up this AI and within, like, two hours it was racist or, you know, like, neural networks, they have stuff like that. But, you know, I think it's actually blind spots really are the problem. And when you have such a large, uh, when they talk about in this particular study uh, or in this paper, the summary mentions these sort of really large uh repositories of information, of text information, you know, you're just going to, by default, you're going to run into more issues. And it's not going to be as nuanced because it's not a small batch, you know, kind of specifically crafted AI. And so it's 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 tough. It's a tough thing. But blind spots, I think, are the, the hardest thing about AI is that, you know, there is nobody on earth who could program under with an understanding of everybody else on earth. And the but other I thing that's it. frustrating is this is why Google hired Gebru to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you characterized uh, Sundar's response as an apology. Um, it's my understanding that there really wasn't an apology. He said we could have done better at de-escalation. Yeah. And she's a little upset. She's like, oh, great. So now I'm the angry black woman. Oh, boy. Like you're making, right. making it look like the emotion yeah. of it and not the, the logical she point tweeted, I was trying to make. This, they paint me as this angry black woman because they put you in this terrible workplace. And if you speak up about it, then you become a problem. And then they start talking about de-escalation strategies. You write emails, they get ignored. You write documents, they get ignored. Then you discuss how it's being done and they talk to you, talk about you as if you're like some angry black woman who needs to be contained. Uh, this is, regardless of what really happened, and I think often, and I've said this before, a disclaimer with employment uh, cases, you don't always know all the information. There's all sorts of legal restrictions on what mm -hmm. companies can say about uh, this. Uh, so there may be other stuff that happened we don't know about. It's not a good look for Google at all. At, no, at they the blew least, it. it's clumsy. Yeah. It's clumsy. And at yeah. the worst, it's it's insidious. Yeah. Uh, you're right. It wasn't an apology, was it? Uh, it's been characterized by some as an apology, but I don't see the word. I'm sorry. <laughs> the circumstances, he, he writes, that led up to Dr. Gebru's departure, examining where we could have improved and led 
a more respectful process. The company needs to accept responsibility for the fact that a prominent black female leader with immense talent left Google unhappily. Now, those are issues. Those are issues. I mean, she's, she's honestly a, a catch. Like, That's right. Yeah, she's very valuable. Like, she's yeah. really brilliant. Yeah. So what a loss for them. I mean, what a what an absolute loss. What a just, I mean. More than 1,400 Google staff members, uh, 1,900 other uh, people in the field have signed a petition uh, supporting uh, hashtag I support Timnit and hashtag believe black women. Um, actually, uh, that's an ongoing thing. So those numbers are, might even be out of date. It's now 2,351 Googlers and 3,729 academic industry and civil society supporters. And what is Google's total, uh, black employee population? I believe it's under 2%. <laughs> yeah. That was mm -hmm. another problem she brought up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, boy, things are getting worse good. and worse for Google. I have to say. Uh, I, I used to love this company, and now I'm really wondering uh, what's happening there. But you were right, uh, Ashley, when you said it's not a team sport. You know, you may love a company, but the company doesn't love you. Yeah, That's and not... also companies change. You know, you have every right to to feel like you know you used yep. to love a company, and now you don't love them as much. And there are people who feel that way about Apple and Samsung, and I, you know, it's just, and that's fine, and you should. You should be open to criticizing companies that you care about, especially the most, like I argue. I mean, that you know, you should be you should be critically thinking about the things that you use every day. You know, I, I, I love my iPhone, but I I don't just blindly go with whatever Apple says. I mean, geez, if you've seen any of my live tweets for their events, like I kind of drag them a lot of the time because they're just. They're so easy so to drag. <laughs> easy. It's so easy. Um, but but also, you know, it's just you should be doing that. You should be looking at the companies that you love to use their products. You should be looking at them with a critical eye and right. you should demand that they make their product better for you, right. for everybody who uses it. Like right. you deserve that as a consumer. You've given them your money. You demand better from them. Well, and as tech journalists, we have an even higher obligation Sure. Uh, because uh, the last, I hate it when I when you go to an event, an Apple event, particularly, and you see the journalists applauding. It's like, dudes, uh, <laughs> knock it yeah. off. Yeah, that's but, that's an interesting one because yeah. you know, E3 as a journalist, yeah, E3. yeah. I mean, you're not really supposed to be doing that, but I I agree. I mean, I I think that um, opinions have evolved of these. Like, I I have loved Google for many years, and in the last couple of years, they haven't really given me a lot to love. Yeah. Um, whereas Apple, I historically was a little bit more critical of because, you know, the way they do things. And and I feel like they've given me more to love with their some of the stances they've taken with inclusivity and, um, you know, just the way they run their company. And so and then Samsung somewhere in the middle. Like, I just don't really understand them <laughs> at all. Because well, get ready, because it uh, seems like we just had new Samsung phones. Now here comes the uh, S21. Yeah. But didn't they kill yeah. the note? They R. killed R. the note. note. R.I.P. No, I'm, I'm, so, I'm stuck yeah. with this uh, fold. Well, it's going to be the fold, right? That's the thing they're going to go forward <laughs> Does with. Does anybody want that's this? that's the new one? note. That's got to <laughs> be the new note. I was going to return it, but I, I guess you only have two weeks to turn, return it. What do you like about it? I love the size. And, and actually, this part works where you open it up and there's, there's you know, it's it's got a big screen. Let me unlock it. It's got a big screen. I love the size. I could play Stadia on it. But... There are pitfalls to f to folding screens, one of which is, I guess it's so delicate that you have to have a screen protector on it. This one is apparently made of rubber. So I don't know if you've ever uh, used a rubber touch screen before. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Odd. Oh, no. Um, Your finger doesn't glide. It as, doesn't uh, glide. As, as it, 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 it's, it hitches, Drags. hitches mm. on it. And it's also, it holds dirt. So I don't, I can't, now apparently people are, it's, they're, this screen protector is bubbling up. Now you remember in the first batch of the first yeah. fold, people took it off and it broke. Uh, <laughs> so no, I'm reluctant to touch it, but people have it bubbling up and stuff. You can bring it to a Samsung Depot and they'll put a new one on. So... It's a great so quality for a touch screen phone. First, I'm afraid to yeah. touch it. Yeah. <laughs> What a selling point. It's it's got a big it's got a it's nice. It's, it's like big. Happy Fun Ball. It's like yeah. that SNL commercial Happy Fun. Do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. Just don't. Just don't. It's not that happy. Touch the touch screen. It's not that happy. Don't make a lot of eye contact. Like the other with one. The, 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 the fold. What's the other the one? Flip. The flip. Yeah. 
that one, I you know, That's I've been tempted because it's kind of a, you know, this one that you have, I, you know, Samsung, they, you know, they give you these things for like exactly two weeks and they literally come to your house and like take it out of your right. hands if you don't. No, the screen, it. the screen was great for the first two weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all the time they gave you. You never you get to it. see so of course, I, what happens. I after, it's great. Yeah. And I wanted to return this after two weeks, but unfortunately it took us too long to review it. So I, I bought it for $2,000. I didn't oh. really want Oh my it. God. Yeah, well, I, that's, you know, my... That's, that's just shy of four AirPods Pro Max. I know. <laughs> Leo, you could totally flip that on eBay today for like maybe 700 This is really cheesy. I got... <laughs> they send you for 50 bucks. So I got a 50 buck like coupon. So I, I said, oh, I'll buy the leather case because, you know, you carry this around and you feel like if I drop this, it is definitely going to break. And mm -hmm. that's $2,000. So this is the leather case they send you. <laughs> oh my god. For $50. The rest of it? That's it. It goes snaps on the back. And by the way, it's oh, not that wow. leathery. It's more like a like rubber. It's it's like plastic. More rubber. More rubber. Maybe I'm tactically challenged. Maybe I shouldn't be using Samsung devices. Have you ever burned That's your hands and killed the yeah. birds in your hands, Leo? Oh, Is yeah. That, I used to work at McDonald's as a fry cook. I got no feeling in my oh, fingers that's, at all. Oh, that's the problem. Those <laughs> phones are not meant for former fry cooks. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's, on like the, that's actually fighter. on the box. It's on the disclaimer on the box. It says, if you were ever... former fry cooks, please do not buy. It's, it's like a firefighter saying, okay, I'm going out. I'm going to put on the one glove. <laughs> <laughs> if you were so uh, i'm a teenager i'm a kid i don't know but if you work at mcdonald's as one of the cooks you're ex and now i'm sure they have a machine that does this now but you're expected they have a special long spatula because you're cooking like 800 hamburgers at once they have a special long spatula and you're supposed to i was taught to anyway you put the spatula under the burgers you hold them with your fingers the things are searing hot and flip them <laughs> And it's considered, you just have to. It's macho. You can't say, that hurts. Ow. No, you have to do that. So, I, I can I almost guarantee that's not the way they're doing it. I'm pretty anymore. sure they don't do <laughs> that no anymore. Way. I'm pretty sure that was like, not. Number one, the fingers so on the burger are concerning more than uh, you know, your, searing, your seared fingertips. Yeah. yeah, now that I think about it, that was kind of, that's kind of odd. But that's how you did it. And, and now very, you have no fingerprints anymore because the oil just yeah. burned them right off, I'm yeah. sure. It's helpful, though, because now, you know, when I'm making pizza in a pizza oven or whatever, I can just pick it, take it right out. Mm -hmm. so, so, Leo, when so you worked making these hamburgers? What what ages were you? 16 to about 18 or 19, something like that. Well, that's incredible because you know what I did from 16 to 17? What? I worked at a Chick-fil-A in Cleveland. Yum. So there must be some commonality fast that food and fast tech food workers become <laughs> tech journalists. Actually, I loved working at McDonald's. I really enjoyed it. I it was my first job. I learned how to work. They, you know, they say to every, you're never standing still. You're always cleaning. You're always doing something. It was a very, it was a great lesson. I got, I remember three twenty five an hour. Uh, and that was more money back in the 1920s, but still, you know, it was, <laughs> was before, a the, before the depression. For the good, depression, good that time. was good. I was happy to it's have a good it. Time. I was happy to have it. Um, well, all right, all right. Let's take a, one more break, but I do want to talk about HBO Max streaming movies. Disney. Did you watch the four-hour Disney Plus reveal? Talk about talking for a long time. You know, I did, Leo. Come on. Of course you did. All right, we're going to talk. Well, we'll wind up with all of that. And, I just like to say the word John Stanky over and over again. So uh, we'll get we'll get to all of that in just a little bit. What a, I love this panel. Can you just stay here all week, and <laughs> and I'll come back and we'll do it again. How about that? Our show. We're here in the beautiful LastPass studio. I really want to thank LastPass all year uh, long. LastPass has been our studio naming sponsor. Um, I've been using them for twelve years. They're their absolute best la uh, password manager out there. We, use, we started using LastPass corporately about five years ago. <laughs> There's kind of a funny story around this. Uh, one of our engineers could never remember the passwords to things like our web pages and, you know, databases and Amazon and all that stuff. So he made a nice little public website with all the passwords in it so he wouldn't forget uh, turned out that was probably not a good idea. When we saw that, we said, oh, we're getting LastPass right now. If And I imagine for a lot of companies, you're sending employees home. There's a little trepidation. They have the keys to the kingdom. 
you know, your bank accounts, your databases, everything, they've got those passwords. If you're using LastPass, you don't have to worry. First of all, they don't got those passwords. LastPass does. The data is never decrypted anywhere but on device, computer, uh, laptop, phone. In, in They have every every browser, every uh, every um, uh, operating system. And so your and your employees may not even have to know the password. They just see the dots, and it's all done. They're logged in. In many cases, they they use single sign-on, 1,200 applications, which is even better. It's passwordless. They love it. Life is simple for them, but you will love it too, and your IT department, and security people will love it too because they know exactly who's using what, when, and where. And and because LastPass does things like multi-factor authentication, contextual information like IP address, geolocation, you can really be sure that only the right people are accessing your data. It's called a zero-knowledge security model. This was invented at Google. The idea that you know, in the old days, you'd figure anybody inside the perimeter. Well, you know, they're inside the perimeter, so they're safe. No. Now we know that's not, you can't do that. You assume everybody is a threat and you have to make sure that everybody is authenticated properly. That's what LastPass does. You can have absolute control over, there's a hundred plus policies you can enforce. We, for instance, require employees to use two-factor authentication. We have minimum standards for for their uh, master password. You can view password scores for every employee. You can see what accounts they're sharing what groups they're members of. When they share passwords, they can do it with LastPass securely, not on a post-it note or via text message. It makes it easy to integrate onboarding users and uh, revoking access, syncing groups, because it'll work with, no matter what your organization's source of truth, it'll work with whatever directory system you're using. I can just go on and on. It's so easy to use. It's so powerful and it's so secure. And it does the thing that is so hard to do, which is it makes it, Good security, more convenient. Now, normally that's a trade-off. It's more secure, is less convenient. But LastPass makes it actually easier. Employees love it. You will love it. And, of course, it uses the best strong encryption algorithms. And your master password's never transmitted anywhere but on the device. Things like that. IT leaders need to invest now in upgrading or adding security technologies because remote work isn't over. It's not going to be over for a while. Let your employees be more productive and more secure. Start with LastPass. It's we what we did, and I am so glad. This is this is no time. Don't wait till the end of the year when you get your new budget to get strong security. Now's the time to start solidifying your cybersecurity strategy with the award-winning LastPass, the best password manager out there. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Thank you, LastPass. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, they they kept this network on the air during a very difficult time because of COVID. Uh, we really appreciate it. LastPass.com slash twit. And you can show your appreciation by going to that address and signing up. You'll be doing yourself a favor. LastPass.com slash twit. Okay. You watched all four hours. I think David Pogue did as well of the Disney Reveal. Ashley, I came I, close. I, I read a summary of all four hours. <laughs> a, I didn't even do that. I read a, a paragraph. Uh, it, it was I a lot. one line. One line. price increase for Disney+. Plus. Yes. They're going to seven ninety nine. dollars And then simultaneously the Game Awards at a certain point. Oh, the TGA. Like, yeah. It was a lot. Animal Crossing, Classic. best family game of 2020. They're not wrong. They're not wrong. What was the best game? Do you remember? Best game of this year? I, I mean, don't even remember. I argue it was Animal Crossing, but... I'd agree. Um, but I also understand... I mean, all of the nominees are really good. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two is not not a game that is for me. It's depressing. Uh, especially not now. It's a like good maybe game. Yeah, but it's depressing. That was amazing, the best game of the Amazing, but very depressing. Yeah. Um, and then Ghost of Tsushima, also very, very good. Yeah. Um, I just... Animal Crossing was the game I needed this year, so it's yeah. my game of the year. Like, it's so funny, be. and I think people mock us for playing it and stuff. I know my wife does, but uh, there's a lot of thought and beauty in it, and there's no in-game mm -hmm. purchases, so it's not. I spent hundreds of dollars on Simpsons Tapped Out Donuts, <laughs> much more than I spent. I love that you're a Simpsons Tapped Out Donuts whale. Come on, I whale. am a whale. What are you doing? And. Well, this is something I'm still a little bitter about. This was some years ago, but somehow it crashed and lost my town. And I still had 300 donuts <laughs> and hundreds of dollars sunk into it. I do fear that with uh, 
uh, Animal Crossing, but at least I haven't spent money to do all this. I love it. They did not. There is no in app. Oh, time. time. What is time? So I'm stuck time. at home yeah, anyway. Yeah, what is time at this point? It's just a construct. They even now. There's little thoughtful things. Like they've set it up so that you really, there's no point in spending more than an hour a day on it. Right, Ashley? Yeah, I mean, God, 20 minutes? Yeah. Like, I mean, really, after you, just, you know, you after take the you, shops, you do some, yeah. some light gardening. Yeah. You water your pumpkins. if you want to pumpkins. spend big chunks of time, you can. Yeah, but you're doing, you're kind of, then it's a repetitive, you're a little grinding. But mm -hmm. see, I think this is an interesting point that you're making is that so they engineered this game because there is no in-app purchase. There's no sort of like push to right. these kids. You know, I have I've two young kids that are like, you know, um, with Roblox. And this is why I'm kind of like on a rant against it is because it's this whole thing of like getting them to play as long as humanly possible. Right. Because all they yeah. want is in-app purchases right. and clothes and this and that. And like the Roblox yeah. You know, the, the Robux, I think they're called. Oh, my gosh. If I had a nickel for every time they asked me for a Robux, I'd be – or Robux, I'd be a rich Nintendo guy. Nintendo deserves a lot of praise for not doing yes. that. And Absolutely. I would look at for the kids because you're built you, – you have a house. You're decorating it. You're making things for it. Then eventually you're decorating your island. You're trying to make it look nice. You get awards for the better, the better your house looks, you catch and the better fish. Your you open a museum. Yeah, you, can, you have a museum. Real, they're real animals that exist. You like go yeah. look in there, and they'll tell you real. There's facts educational about the stuff. Yeah, Blathers, yeah. the museum curator, insists on telling He's, you. He insists. On <laughs> he, He's always you so disappointed you when you say no, no, I'm I'm busy. Thanks anyway. He goes, oh, okay. It's really a I the the little details. I know we sound nuts. But I'm sincere here. The little details in this, yeah. I think, are really impressive. And the fact that they're not I should say, you. full full disclosure for anybody listening, I, I have done esports casting uh, with Nintendo for Splatoon. And the producer of that game is also one of the producers oh, of Animal Crossing. Thank him. Um, and he is just, he's a very nice man, Mr. Nogami. And um, thank and, him. I'm yeah, really impressed with what he did with Animal Crossing. He, yeah, and he, he just, it's like, he they're just, um, Mr. Nogami in particular, just like, just a really delightful kind of like weirdo. And like, I just appreciate his his team. It's kind that of Animal a Japanese game just, though. It's great. got a very Japanese feel to it. I can't wait till Sakura <laughs> season. What are you I love how this started out as a, what do you oh, think? Oh no, Disney. Disney. Plus, I know, I don't know. I'm sorry. All Twice roads now. Back to all Animal roads Animal. lead to ACNH. I'm so sorry. Okay, all Disney. All roads lead back to pulling turnips out of animal turnips. crossing. Turnips. So the deal with turnips, they call it the stalk market because you got stalks of turnips. No, I'm sorry. Let's go on to Disney. <laughs> yeah. You're uh, doing it again. <laughs> that's actually, Leo and I are just going to launch an Animal Crossing. I show. think we should. Is There, there must this be. This week in Animal Crossing. This week in Animal Crossing. T -W Not a bad idea. T-W-I-A-C. Twyak. But the, the really stunning thing about the Disney Plus announcement. Yes. Yeah. Please, David, there, please. Get us back on track. They are launching a new uh, serial television spinoff of Star Wars. Not one, not two, not five. Ten, ten. series. And ten on ten Marvel as well. And ten Marvel. Like how can how will they maintain any quality with that much stuff? Well, you would one would argue the Mandalorian's good, right? Yeah, but that's one, not twenty. Well, so I, I argue that they're so some of these are limited. So like, for example, they, they might only be like one season. Um, so Loki is a good example of something that is probably not going to be very successful as a, tr a movie trilogy, a, you know, six hours of, of film, but a six hour miniseries on Disney Plus with a smaller budget. Great for them. Great for them. <sighs> It, On the other hand, it's only eight bucks a month, so that's pretty good. Th so this is the problem that Apple TV faces, which is they don't have enough depth. So Disney not only started with a great catalog, but now they're creating massive amounts of content. I think that's very smart. Meanwhile, over uh, at HBO, which is now, which is owned by Time, which is owned by Warner Brothers, which is owned by Warner Media, which is owned by AT and T, uh, they've just announced. Warner's just announced. You know, the movie theaters overrated COVID. All of the movies next year are going to go on at the same time as they're released for theaters are going to go on HBO Max free, free which is going to cost them a pretty penny. Um, this was that thing we were talking about earlier, which is we're moving away from owning content, physical content, even movie theaters to everything is over the Internet. 
all streamed all the time. And partly that's that been hastened by COVID, but I think it's also the next big thing. Yeah. A, I think I mean, there's was a there few... ever any doubt? Yeah. People I, get like, mad think... at me when I say that. They say, no, I love books. Oh. I love my DVDs. They're the best qualities on UHD Blu-ray. <laughs> and I go, well, yeah. That is true. That's true. I'm not, uh, that's true. I'm, I'm not denying that. Leo, just but a I, tip from a pro. Best yeah. not to mock your viewers. <laughs> and then you <laughs> said. Got some great advice there. <laughs> but so they many know people I'm not talking wanted, about them. Okay. <laughs> so many people have wanted this idea of, you know, the, the at home. Like people are like, oh, I'll, I'll gladly pay 50 bucks mm -hmm. to watch this movie at home. Which, by the way, has turned out not to be true. Because when they wanted to charge $20 for the Mulan, I was like, no, we'll just no. wait the three months yeah. in the DeMuro house. Yeah. Did your kids but pressure they, but you? But here's the thing: they're doing, but they're doing it again, which means it had to have been successful. No, they're them. not. They're well, not yeah, charging they're doing, for HBO Max. No, no, no that's Disney. Yeah. Disney. Oh, Disney. Disney's doing yeah. that Disney. again. Yeah, Disney's There's doing some, it again. No, what Disney movie are they never doing said again? if Mulan succeeded or not. They gave yeah. the impression that maybe they did do all right, because and now that we know they're going to do yeah, it again. I think they're doing Raya: The Last Dragon as the one right. that's going to be. Okay. How about Tenet? Who owns Tenet? Oh, that's a Warner. That's Warner Warner. that thing where you um you pay a hundred bucks and you get the entire movie theater right for yeah like right. a, six people so my my family plus two guests went and it you did that cheap. yeah we did it it was cheaper than buying movie tickets and yeah. wow. it was so cool I mean it was so you, you cool. had, so you had ten people how many people did you have we had uh we had nine people. And so you had the and whole theater yourself. The whole theater to ourselves, and we could popcorn? we could talk. We could use our phones. We could. Did you drape feel safe? Yeah, totally <laughs> safe. They they come in with a crew right before you go in, and they disinfect everything. And yeah, I mean, this was probably three months ago. Is there popcorn? Was, Is there a concession? There's, okay, there's popcorn. You buy all the same I mean, stuff, and and then we watched that's Tenet. That's really cool. And had no clue what was happening. <laughs> that movie. <laughs> that movie is bad storytelling. You just have no idea what's happening. Well, that's kind of Christopher Nolan, right? You bought, the, bought screenplay, the screenplay? You bought the screenplay? Hoping to understand? Yeah, I understand it. Oh, no. And it still makes no sense. Oh, dear. Who are these people? Who are they working for? <laughs> what's going on? I often think that with Inception, I kind of took me a while to figure out. Yeah. I kind of think that's his thing. Um, have you but seen the, the have HBO you seen Max it? thing is like... You, so there's like a few things at play here. One, there is no longer the Paramount rule. So these movie studios like Disney and Warner Brothers, they do not care if AMC goes out of business because then- No, they them want them to go out of business. Buy AMC right. and then they will own a theater chain. They want them no to go out of preventing business. Them. So that's, that's one part of it. But the other part of it for- um, for HBO Max, I think actually this is a little bit short-sighted um, and there has been a lot of outrage in the- in the industry about this from filmmakers and actors. Um, and Christopher, Christopher Nolan did an interview and discussed this. Um, and he doesn't mention like him uh, specifically. He talks about the unions and residuals. Well, and there's a big problem because they owe these people box office percentages. And well, a lot and of the aren't. bigger talent, the top of the line talent is going to get back end so they're getting you know like they had to buy out patty well, what's, jenkins what's the back on end on bonus. hbo max so well, exactly. no, there is they're any. buying them out on the bed there is none so it's the that's thing is, the is that's the so problem mad. is it a presumed back end Do they say well we would have made 90 million dollars so here's nine million so as i understand it with wonder woman 1984 patty jenkins and that entire cast got ahead of what they they knew were it was doing coming in 2021 yeah and there was a separate discussion made okay. to to allow Wonder Woman to to launch. Day She's and the day director, and Gal Gadot Christmas. is the, the yeah. star. And, and they so both they got big payments. Paid. Yeah, they have been paid. They have yeah. been paid. So a lot of times, um, if you're not familiar with how uh, movies work and how payments work, so a lot of times, like an actor will take ten million dollars, and then if the movie makes a billion dollars at the box office, they get an extra ten million dollars, and so that's their bonus. They get a box office bonus. And so Warner bought out those bonuses to allow Wonder Woman to stream day and date on Christmas Day. None of the talent next year uh, in 2021, none of those, as as I understand it, and I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I had read time. it. 2021, Wow. HBO Max just announced, hey, we're releasing these day and date. Like, and, and all of the filmmakers are very upset, 
not only for obviously themselves, because that's a lot of money, but they're also upset for the unions because when these things go to uh, streaming and they're signed for and everything, these there are there are union agreements for IATSE and a lot of these other their crew. These are these are regular people who, you know, barely make ends meet a lot of times in Hollywood, or who you know just work jobs and and they well, are not. I don't know if they make money on the. I don't know if they make a percentage of the the take of the. You know, no. if you're if you're a, a driver for like the union, they, get, they get residuals. Get a residual they do get they residuals. do get residual payment when those contracts oh, are signed and the and the, that streaming property is sold. There is a residual ah, payment made. Okay. Well, I mean, look. At the end of the day, I I give HBO Max credit. I would have never thought that they would do something like this. Now, maybe it's a push. AT and T, like you said, Leo is you know the parent company at this point. So clearly, um, you know, they are. I mean, you would think they're forward thinking, but they're the Death you know. Star. <laughs> AT&T but, but, wants this because it gets people on to HBO HBO Max right. which is that that's all they, they care make about. Money they want, down and the they road want people watching their subscription. content right. on yeah. their network. So yeah. that's which that's I, what but, they but want. At the same time to, we have all yeah. Go ahead. I was surprised to see that HBO Max's launch was considered a flop. They have 12 million subscribers. Disney Plus mm -hmm. now has what 80 million 87 I think wow. only only 30% of people who had HBO, who get HBO Max for free, signed up for it. See, that's really? bizarre. Well, that's because they can't figure it out. That, they can't I think out you nailed to, it. It's not that they don't that want really it. Is. They just don't yeah. know they've got it. They don't even know they can well, even number have one, it. They yeah. still have three apps. You've got a, uh, you had it's two very huge confusing. holdouts in, in Roku, which is still exactly a holdout. Right. Yep. You had, uh, H, uh, what was the other one? Fire TV just came on board like two or three weeks right. ago. That's right. So, I mean, when you look at the two largest streaming platforms here in the U.S., I mean, gates. you know, Fire TV, Roku, two of the biggest were not even right. available. And then you had these different apps. There's three different apps that people were downloading, which was HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO Max. I mean, it was totally a mess. <laughs> it was insane. Ridiculous. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And then I, you have I Netflix. do think people it's a misstep like, because they're losing, they're already losing directors who do, who are just not going to want to work with Christopher it's, Nolan. It's, it's a game to said, play. I mean, the said, thing is, is it's the a best dangerous game for them. Talent in Hollywood went to bed thinking they were working for the best movie company in yeah. Hollywood, Warner Brothers, and woke up Realizing they and were working for the worst streaming company. Uh, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Give me a break. Patty You've got Jenkins Netflix is who is leaving. considered the Pat most evil force in Hollywood. And so many Hollywood people have gone there and taken a big payday. Well, this is why at and is doing this. I mean, you could, there's two possible reasons. It could be an antitrust thing, trying to put the theaters out of business. I wouldn't put it past them. But the other reason they're doing it, they're recognizing the facts of the matter, which is people at least through June aren't going to be going back to the theaters. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and that their big competition is not, it's Netflix. Yeah. That that's where people are going to be getting their content from going forward is Netflix, Amazon Prime. And mm -hmm. so they've got to they've got to do something to compete. And Disney. I mean, Disney, Disney Plus is one of the biggest forces Jeez, out there. I mean, who, when they opened up with this back catalog of stuff, they did a great job. But like they are continuing. I mean, I see we have a billboard here on the 405 where I drive past and it's like, they have a, something new every single month. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, Netflix has a million new things every month, but like Disney Plus is really doing a good job of like keeping the service fresh. Not in the, you know, with these huge things, but like enough to keep there, you going. There was yeah, some there's enough to keep you paying. There was some thought that part of it might be that Warner looked at Warner's looked at its 2021 slate of movies and thought yeah. mm -hmm. like so I've heard like I've the conjuring, the conjuring, the devil made but, me but do have, it. Oh my God. But they have the Matrix uh, Four. They have the new Godzilla Matrix movie versus Dune. Kong, Tom yeah, and Jerry. That's, like that's big. a big movie. Yeah, like but Matrix so Four I, would be, I think. Some of these look an, good. Yeah. There's an but interesting see, the, theory that someone had put forth that I had heard that was um, that this was actually very advantageous for for Warner's to do in 2021 during the while the pandemic is still happening and while not while movie theaters aren't going to be back 100 percent right um, is that by releasing these movies day and date for one month which they say so it'll be one month it's like 30 days it's not forever is that um, HBO Max, uh, HBO will be able to, and Warner Brothers will be able to write off the production costs of these movies as marketing expenses. Oh. And so um, so instead of taking that really big hit it's a for, tax for a, a low box office, 
Mm. It ends up being, okay, well, now we're not going to go bankrupt because now we can write these movies off as a marketing expense for HBO Max right. because it'll but, because technically it is a promotion. It's pr- They're promoting it by only allowing it to be available for the first month that it's in theaters. But that's the 800-pound elephant in the room. Uh, Warner Brothers says that this is a one-year experiment, but everybody else is saying bull on that. You're not gonna. Yeah. You're not gonna snap back to the old way in 2022. Yeah. Well, they have. I mean, the I don't option, think though, anyone knows the what the beauty of this plan. Well, they might have the option unless days. every movie theater goes out of business because of it. No <laughs> one's gonna know what the new way is. Honestly, it'll be some weird right. hybrid. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Like it's not gonna be the way it was for sure. It's not gonna be the way it was. And I think. I think what has been happening in the film and television industry has only been accelerated by the pandemic. Wow. This is really, I, I should have started with this. This is a good topic. This There's a lot of- Are you of guys all going to get the vaccine as soon as yes. you can get- How about you, David? Yeah, absolutely. How about you, I, I did Rich? A, I did a story on the vaccine two weeks ago for did you? Sunday morning. And the original plan was for me to get the vaccine oh. on camera. I was like, oh, wow. Yes. Oh. Well, you, you'll, I'm sure there'll be a- Redux, you'll get a chance to do that. Um, I'm not sure I would have wanted to two weeks ago, though. That's pretty brave of you. Uh, now that enough people have done it, we can see what some of the issues are and so forth. Uh, there is a big tech story. I mean, both of these uh, 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 technologies, both of these vaccines are using mRNA, messenger RNA, which is a, a f really amazing breakthrough in vaccine design. And the fact that we were able to design these in under a year and I guess the you did the story, so you could tell me the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are very similar. They're almost interchangeable. Yeah, there, there's actually an even more incredible story. They didn't come up with this in a year. First of all, a lot of it was done for the SARS uh, virus that ah, was already in place. Which and was then a coronavirus as well, right? Right. Yeah. And if you go back even farther, there's this amazing Hungarian woman, this researcher at University of Pennsylvania, who started with this idea of harnessing mRNA to fight diseases. And it was such an, a far-fetched, ridiculous idea. Nobody would give her a grant. And she was actually demoted oh my at God. UPenn. Ugh. And then in 2005, she finally nailed it. She published the paper. The two guys who read that paper went on to found, get this, Moderna and BioNTech. No kidding. Those wow. are the two vaccines we have now. Well, she deserves a Nobel Prize in medicine. I hope she gets one uh, down the road. And by the yeah. way, David, you are great on CBS this morning. I forgot to mention that in your opening credits, but that's really, that's where many of us see you every Sunday. And in fact, it's a great story, story, David. Yeah. I is there a way to that. subscribe to the, your stories there? Like, is you have like your own YouTube channel for that? Um, or is it you like know what? If you, if you go to authory.com, like author with a Y, and you guys should know about that. All three of you should know about this service. It's a service for people who put out content, articles and TV stories and whatever. And your followers can sign up to get free email notifications, no ads, every time you put something out there. And the beauty of it is, you guys, if you ever change your employer, if you move from CNET to something else, all your followers go with you. You own <sighs> That's that brilliant. list. Yeah, because they could on the front page. So th yeah, look at that. Is, <laughs> they could fire me here at Twitter at any time. So I really need to sit down and sign up for this quick. <laughs> this could it's, be. It's really great. So yeah, so if you if you go to authory.com slash David Pogue, then you nice. can sign up to get my stuff for free. Oh, nice. That's oh, awesome. That's cool. Yeah, and CBS helpful. lets you do that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because they, they don't have anything. Because you're really just linking to their content, right? It's like that's you're linking exactly to their. Right. Ah. Yeah. And yeah, I they love it. Because every sure. week, it's more content. All, the, all my yeah, followers get people. an email link to the story. See, that's, yeah, that's one great. thing that's changed dramatically over the last couple of decades. It used to be that companies were terrified because the cable companies would get mad if you put content online. They were worried that it would be kill viewership. And so they really, the contracts usually prohibited that. But now they're... Well, that, I, Remember when, well, when YouTube I mean, launched, NBC sued them, saying, why are you yeah. putting Saturday Night Live clips up? You're killing us. And, and of course, they quickly learned, oh, my God, this is the best thing that ever happened to Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. I, I think that's still a, an issue with a lot of these um, media companies. You know, it's like, how do you, you know, I'd love to put all my stuff just straight up on, like, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. but I kind of do versions of it because right. I don't, you know, I'm not sure I'm allowed to just put, like, you know, my full clips. Hmm. 
You should talk to this guy, David Pogue. I think he's got to figure it out. I just signed up for Authory, so now I'm just in <laughs> Yeah, in that's good, David. You've done a good Rich thing. Is in. That's Rich it's, Demuro. I got to say, it's it's really nice. Like every the, the email notifications are clean and uncluttered and very Apple-esque. I and just subscribed. I mean, that's awesome. The, the follower, your followers love it. It's for for the journalists. It's like seven bucks a month, but it's it's free for the followers. Very nice. Nice. Uh, Rich Demuro is on KTLA and all over the world on uh, the OANN network. No, no, <laughs> on. <laughs> Is it Sinclair Media? To Next star. That's it. Oh, my gosh. Please don't compare me to those things. No. I like to tease you. Rich is never now coming back. I like to tease you. I'm going to be, yeah. Rich on oh. tech TV at Rich Demuro on the Twitter, at Rich on Tech on Twitter as well. And, yes, on uh, Max Star everywhere. Is that right? Did I get it right? Next star. Next star, it, Max. No, it doesn't, you know, look, uh, the company does not matter. We are local TV stations. Local TV everywhere. Yeah. People Nobody do not even know knows. what their local, local TV station provider. is owned Nobody by. Nobody knows so. who Next star is. It's just KTLA is, you know, and, yeah. and the other stations that we're on. People know just that. Where can I mean? see you in Boston? Uh... I don't know if we have a station in Boston. People always actually. ask me stuff oh, like no. that. Can I hear your radio show in Muncie? I don't know. <laughs> I, I have to look it up. Like, There's my, a podcast. Actually, my wife, her, the answer is when friend, I move there, her, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when I move to Boston. Yeah, I don't so, Leo, that. you have a special voice that you use just when you're mocking your listeners? Is that oh, it? my God. <laughs> Pretty soon it's going to be my David Pogue voice. And then David Pogue <laughs> said. calling you out. <laughs> Called out. I love my listeners. I'm not mocking them. I just talk funny when I talk. That's all. <laughs> wow. You're right. You to, I should stop doing voices. that. I did because get a nasty gram. You need gram. to know that it's a viewer voice. I did get a nasty gram from a woman named Beth last week. Uh, she said, I was listening to your show. You were so condescending. I thought, what? What are you talking about? I'm not condescending, am I? I you know, make fun of how you talk. And then you asked your Halo band, and it was <laughs> yeah. like Leo. <laughs> yeah, I should have listened to my Halo. That, <laughs> that is Ashley Esketha, who is, of course, senior producer at CNET and wonderful. And we love all the things you do as well. Anything you want to plug in particular? Um, yeah, actually, you know, I'm going to plug a not CNET thing. Um, I do a comic book show called Comic Book Squad. Oh, nice. With my friends Hector Navarro and Damien Poitier. Um, and we do that on Twitch every other Wednesday. Oh, nice. We talk about comic books. It's just a little, it's a little book club. That's what we do. We talk about comic books. So this week we're, uh, this Wednesday, it's every other Wednesday night at eight o'clock Pacific. And, um, yeah, it's Comic Book Squad. So we're going to read Mr. Miracle this week, and we're really excited because one of uh, the artists on the book, Mitch, uh, Mitch Ger Gerrids, is going to come join us. Gerrids, join us. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, it should be really fun, and uh, and and we love it. And it's a really small little community. We don't. It's not a ton of people. It's free to watch. Uh, we do it because we love comic books, and, and so, it's live uh, only. Yeah, I'm I'm one of those uh, people. On everybody keeps asking me to archive the episodes and upload them to YouTube, and I'm like, no. You have to come watch it on that Wednesday night, and then Twitch will keep it for two weeks, and then it will go away forever. We'll That's just so retro. But that is such a cool idea, though. I think An so. online Twitch book club. I mean, yeah. that's... That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. We just talk about it. And then we got the chat. Everybody can chat about it. We pick what we're going to read the next time. So everybody has a couple weeks. We let everybody know what, you know, what we're going to read. And um, sometimes we'll read maybe just one volume. So we might read, you know, five to eight issues. Uh, or sometimes like Mr. Miracle, it's a 12 issue run. So we just are going to read the whole thing. Wow. Do you read it out loud? No. No, we just talk we about just it. Talk we about talk about it like a book talk club. About the book, yeah, yeah. talk about the artwork, talk yeah. about the themes. Nice. Um, sometimes we, you know, we uh, obviously like we talk about how it relates to real life. We talk about the time it was written because a lot of times we'll read kind of older books. We might read an older run of something. Uh, we'll say, oh, well, this was written in this year, so we can see how the author was a little clumsy in this way, or you know, things like that, and uh, what was going on at that time when that book was written. So it's, oh, it's I really love it. fun, and it looks like you guys are in a comic book too, which I really like. I that designed layout. that in Photoshop. <laughs> Thank That's you. So, I'm so cool. Glad you noticed. I designed a little uh, comic book panel for us to live in, and oh, um, I love and that. so it's, but it's really fun, and I, I love doing it, and. Um, and we, we have a good time and, and we have a, a really just nice and kind community of people who are um, really the best. And uh, they and we have a little discord and, you know, everybody just talks about comics. It's great. And it's Nazi net. I mean, not net. Yeah, it's not net. 
but it's you know it's comic books and and it's it's so fun we really love it and um and of course as always you can go to the youtube uh the cnet channel on youtube yes and watch uh watch my stuff there yes uh twitch.tv slash the comic book squad thank you ashley thank you rich thank you david it was really great to get you all together uh it made this the longest show we've ever done <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize to everybody. Who's 90% been... was Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have the editors cut that out. It'll be an hour long show. It'll be great. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Thank you all for watching. We do this week in tech every Sunday afternoon, about 2.30 in the afternoon Pacific. That's 5.30 Eastern, 22.20 2230 UTC. If you want to watch live, there's live audio and video streams at twit.tv slash live. If you're watching or listening live, join us in the chat room. There are great people in there uh, going 24-7 at irc.twit.tv. You can use your browser or if you're old school, an IRC client and get on in there. After the fact, all our shows, including this show, are available on our website, twit.tv. There's also a YouTube channel for This Week in Tech. There's also, uh, well, you could subscribe in your favorite podcast client, and that's probably the easiest thing to do. It costs you nothing. You'll get it automatically the minute the show's available, all of our shows. Just search for This Week in Tech in your favorite podcast client. If you listen asynchronously and you're not in the chat room, we have a very nice Twit community where you can go complain about my condescending tone at <laughs> www and my strange, insulting voices, www.twit.community. Uh, we'd love to see you in there. I hang out in there with, uh, with everybody. By the way, next week, December 20th, it's our holiday show. It's OG Twitsters. It'll be Jeff Jarvis, Steve Gibson, and Paul Therott and me looking back at 2020, looking ahead to 2021. Our special holiday show uh, is next week. The week following, it'll be a Twit Best Of and then It'll be a brand new year. So make sure you tune in next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Another twit is in the can. Bye-bye.